Until the day with the dawn ringing in my ears Oh well, I turn to my TV show No better way, I gotta get myself into gear Let's go, oh And I feel good today With my wake up in the morning espresso And I feel good today It's my feel good breakfast show very good morning. Welcome to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. So let's take it back a few steps. On October 4th of 2010, South Africa was introduced to an entertaining morning show filled with flavor, with fun, and of course, a little bit of finesse. This was, of course, the beloved Espresso Morning Show, which over 12 years has now worked tirelessly to ensure that Mzanzi gets the day started on the perfect, most feel-good note possible. Now, a member of that team was also introduced to South Africa at large, none other than Katlejo Mabue. Instantly, the country was charmed by his energetic, his insightful and distinguished persona of an incredibly talented young man. And over the course of the following 10 years, he dazzled on not only this platform, but as the host of Tropica Island of Treasure, Strictly Come Dancing, and of course bagged two best presenter safters along the way and multiple nominations. When Katz had to step away from this and other roles that he was fulfilled, it left a void, a vacuum that we were ultimately just not sure how we were going to fill. However, we knew that in time that he would come home. And Mzanzi, that day is today. Katlech Mabue is making his triumphant return to your screens and into your living rooms this morning. It's going to be an emotional show, folks, so you're going to have to walk every step with us and you're going to have to bear with us just a little bit. A lot has happened uh, between then, his departure, and, of course, this momentous day. All I'm going to say is get the tissues ready. Take a breath, Mzanzi. The magic is about to begin. Firstly, let me say good morning to you and let me tell you how excited I am to be the one that also gets to stand here this morning and open up our arms and share some absolute love. Let's create an environment where we welcome back someone absolutely special to us. I'm so excited, as you can see. I think the smile on my face is going to continue throughout the day and there's going to be so much compassion with that. But uh, to start off the day, we have an incredible uh, saying that I think uh, is so, so pertinent for this morning. It's something that was mentioned by Kat himself and it goes with the saying of, to every single person who has prayed for this moment and wielded it to come to fruition. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I cannot tell you how much this means to me. Ladies and gentlemen, let's join in and welcome Katlejo Mapue back. He's on Expresso once again. And for the next three hours, we're going to have an absolutely magical exclusive. And of course, if you want to join in on the conversation, then come through on our WhatsApp line. That's 0634088863. We'd love to hear your opinion. We'd love to share the love that you have for us this morning and obviously for Kat being back. And don't forget, you can use the hashtag Hashtag cat is back so we can find your conversation that we can find your opinion and share it with the world ladies and gentlemen for now though it's time to uh, commence with official duties and the beautiful Zoe Brown is standing by Oh, thank you, Raul, and it is going to be a beautiful show, but let's quickly touch on those national headlines. Gauteng Community Safety MEC Faith Mazibuko has called on all women in Gauteng to march to the High Court in Pretoria and the Union Buildings tomorrow on Women's Day to highlight the country's high rape statistics. This after the gang rape of eight women allegedly by illegal minors in Krugersdorp last week, Mazibuko explained, and I quote, as women, we must stand up and fight to ensure that our rights and dignity are restored. We are in a democracy, but we see women forever being oppressed." End of quote. And staying with local news, the Gauteng Education Department says some 600,000 online applicants for Grade 1 and 8 have been processed successfully so far. The 2023 online registration for public schools placement experienced technical glitches when it went live on July 22nd. It will close on August 19th. The MEC for Education, Panyaza Lasufi, held a media briefing ahead of the launch in July, outlining the changes to the system. Lasufi said they had upgraded the technical capacity to manage demand. 
Now, moving to news abroad, life expectancy is rising in Africa, with people living nearly 10 years longer, from 46 to 56 years, according to the World Health Organization. The rise is due to better access to health services on the continent, although the numbers are still well below the global average of 64 years, says the WHO. Life expectancy data from 47 African countries between 2000 and 2019 was analysed by the WHO. It said the rise of life expectancy in Africa was greater than in any other region of the world. And four more ships carrying grain and sunflower oil have left Ukraine ports via a safe maritime corridor. Millions of tons of grain have been stuck in Ukraine due to Russia's blockades, leading to shortages and higher food prices in other countries. But last week, the first ship since February left Ukraine's ports. The largest ship is set to sail. It's bound for Turkey, where they'll be inspected as part of the deal reached with Russia and the UN. Two will dock in Turkey, the other two will head for Italy and China. And the amazing staff at the Owl Rescue Centre, who rescues some 1,000 owls a year, pulled off a slightly different rescue a few days ago, but that of a baby giraffe. The non-profit based in Hartebeersburg in the northwest said the guides patrolling close to the Silkart's Neck Nature Reserve discovered a baby giraffe lying in the felt. He was rushed to their vets in Bryanston, Johannesburg, where he was stabilised. He'd been abandoned at birth and hadn't received any colostrum from from his mom. He was dehydrated and his blood sugar levels were very low. The Owl Center said, and I quote, we managed to obtain a few liters of colostrum from a dairy farm in Cullinan and it was a lifesaver, end of quote. The little patient, now named Marvin, was, the tr was transferred to the Wildlife Division at Odert Odertesport Veterinary Hospital. He received another plasma transfusion yesterday as he is still too weak to suckle. Marvin, who stands 1.8 meters tall and weighs around 50 kilograms, is currently being tube fed to avoid any risk of aspiration pneumonia. Vets believe he'll make a strong recovery. Well, on that very positive note, that's where I leave your morning headlines for now. Here's a first look at your sport with G-Man. Thanks so much, Zoe. And the celebrations continue on the sporting front. The new Premier League season kicked off this past weekend with defending champions uh, beating West Ham 2-0 in the final match of the opening weekend to send out a note to Erling Haaland, netting from the spot and adding a second after halftime. The Man United, on the other hand, they lost 2-1 to Brighton in Eric Ten Hag's first league game. And there were also wins for Chelsea and Arsenal on the opening weekend. Well, Liverpool were held to an entertaining, albeit draw, uh, two all there against at the newly promoted Fulham. And then Spurs were the biggest winners of the weekend, beating Southampton 4-1. Then, staying with footy news, the PSL season got underway as well this weekend with the defending champions, Mamelodi Sundowns, beating Cape Town City 2-0 in their first match of their campaign. Gavin Hunt marking his return to Supersport United with a narrow one-all draw up against Chipper United. And Orlando Pirates, they picked up all three points as well after narrowly beating Swallows 1-0 in the original Soweto derby. And their Soweto rivals, Kaiser Chiefs, not so lucky. Lucky, their opening campaign unfortunately underway with a 1 0 loss to Royal AM. And then on to rugby. Sadly, South Africa scrum half Fuff de Klerk and wing Kirtley Aronser were due to have medical assessments on Sunday after both suffered head injuries during the very impressive 26 10 win over New Zealand in the opening rugby championship match. Of course, de Klerk failed a concussion test after colliding with the knee of New Zealand's uh, very big wing Caleb Clark in just the first minute of the game. Then Aronser was shown a full red card after colliding in the air with Bowden Barrett, with the Bach winger knocking himself out in that clash. Those were the only blemishes on an otherwise superb performance from Jacques Nenova's side, in which Arantza and Vili Rue both scored tries to inflict a third straight loss on the All Blacks. Then on to the Commonwealth Games. Our athletes continue to make good. This time it was cycling legend Daryl Impey who finished second to take the silver medal in the men's cycling road race in another very successful weekend for Team South Africa in Birmingham.
Birmingham. Then Nicolas De Lange, he won silver in the men's freestyle, 97 kilogram gold medal wrestling match. De Lange losing by points nine to three to Canada's Nishan Randawa. Then Zeni Fana Valtran, a, with a personal best, in fact, of 54, 54.47, took bronze in the 400 meter hurdles. Then Simna Kue Bonko and uh, Piwa Kutle Nguni, they both picked up bronze medals in the men's middleweight and women's featherweight boxing, respectively. That means the SA's medal tally now stands at 27 for the Games, an incredible haul. We'll delve a little deeper into some of our weekend sporting action a little bit later in the show, but right now, let's get you prepped for the weather. Thank you so much, G. Of course, it's time to report on the weather, and we have some exciting environmental news for those living in the city of Cape Town. Now, it says it has various plans in place to repair and replace critical water infrastructure that will assist with retaining water. Now, authorities are calling for support from Western Cape residents to save as much water as possible. Now, this with the province having recorded below average rainfall so far for the year and also after the rainy season. Now, collective dam levels in the province currently stand at 63.6% compared to 76.6% a year ago. Now, Mayoral Committee Member for Water and Sanitation, Zahid Badruddin, says they are addressing the issue. And he said in a quote, we are addressing this since the drought period. Now, we have undertaken significant pipe replacement programs where we need to replace or repair pipes and also look at our water meters, making sure they aren't leaking, unquote. Now, he also added that they will be further introducing additional zones into the city where they will be able to control unexpected expected leaks. Well, exciting news indeed, but moving on from environmental news, we head over to those sunrise views. Now, first up this morning, we had this one sent in all the way by Fauzia Tobias. Now, this one coming through from Mbecha, and it's a beautiful, striking pink neon sky glittering up above the streetlights this morning. And come on, how beautiful is this? Mzanzi, yes, please, bring it on. Ryan comes through next and sent in this one all the way from GQ Mbecha. And I mean, come on, look at this view. Oh, it's a morning with the orange horizon all the way up above just as the sun's about to rise and bring us the magic of the day next up france sent us this eerie view this morning with a pastel colored sky all the way out in springs johannesburg i'm loving the silhouettes on this one and myrna goliath sending us this one it's in front of a car this morning all the way in Berga. i see gq's coming through with some good beautiful views and this one all the way above the sky the yellow hues in the distance are just pure magic finally this morning we're celebrating our last picture, we are getting this one all the way from our family member. That's Louise G. Cherry, all the way out in Maybury Park, Alberton. Now, it's a shocking pink and purple sky this morning, and this is everything that we need at Mzanzi to get our day started, and we'd love to see how you do the same. So don't forget to send us your sunrise pictures and your sunrise view wherever you are in the country, because, I mean, look how much it makes us smile. And the number is 0634088863, and uh, yes, continue to make us happy. For now, though, let's take our first look at the temperatures across the country, starting off in Polokwane, the day starting at 8 all the way up to 27. Degrees. Mumbela sees a low of 13 up to 32, nice and warm on your side of the world. Pretoria sees the day starting at 8 up to 24, and Johannesburg is 6 degrees start all the way up to 20 with some rainfall expected. Over in Maki Keng now, the day starting at a chilly 5 degrees but moves up to a moderate 23. In Claxdorp, similar conditions. 4 is your low up to a high of 20. Kimberley, a chilly start of 5 degrees all the way up to 18. And Bloemfontein, bring on the chill for the morning, 2 degrees but moving up to a moderate 17 degrees Celsius. Moving around the coast, now to Richards Bay and you can definitely expect some rain and thunder. A low of 14 up to a high of 25 degrees. Peter Maritzburg bringing the chill back at 8 all the way up to 23 degrees. Durban sees a moderate temperature of 14 up to 22 and Mtata 8 degrees all the way up to 18 and you can definitely expect some rainfall on your side of town. Moving over to East London now and let us pray that this rain lands in those catchment areas. East London brings a low of 12 and a high of 18. 96% chance of rain coming through. Craddock sees a low and a chilly low of 5 up to 16. Rain also expected in your side of town in Mbecha. Dancing in the rain, I'm sure, this morning, and I hope it continues. 12 is your low up to 19 degrees, and George, much the same. Bring on the rain and let us pray that we get rain all the time in this area. 11 is low up to 18 degrees. Down in Cape Town in the Mother City now, your low starting at 10 
up to a high of 19 degrees Celsius. Worcester, chilly start of the day at 9, up to a nice moderate 22 degrees. Sutherland, 5 degrees all the way up to 17. And last but not least, Uppington. Sunny skies expected all the way around 6 is your low, up to a high of 22. And once again, Mzanzi, thank you so much for sending those incredible pictures in this morning. You definitely set the bar. Can't wait to see what comes through next. But of course, send through your comments right now because the man is back. Yes, Cat is back and I cannot wait to celebrate. And of course, come through on our WhatsApp and bring through those voice notes. It's 063-408-8863. For now though, let's catch up with the rest of the team. Oh, thank you, Ra. Listen, a very exciting show. I need to check in with you. Yeah, we you, are real. You good? You good? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm worried. How long yeah. it's gonna last, we don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, we better be able to sleep for days now. And I would imagine one man is more excited than any of us put together. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Kat is back. We're gonna meet the man in just a moment. It's my feel good breakfast show. you'll always know how much I love you. I hope that you never stop learning and growing. That you'll be brave and joyful and kind. And that one day, when you look at me and I look at you, we'll love the wonderful you that you've become. It all begins with purity. Deep breath, deep breath. Oh, shake it out. Shake it out just a little bit there. Oh, I'm going to say a word now that has taken on a whole new relevance for me, and I think for this team and for one man in particular. Homecoming. 
an event that carries with it, I think, a lot of emotions, as we feel right now, as we go home for a myriad of reasons, to reunite with loved ones, to restore one's energy after a long period of hard work and toil, to recharge after a break, to take stock as we head out into new horizons. That's right. And sometimes to put ourselves back together as in a family environment after experiencing the trials and tribulations that life brings. Now, please help us in welcoming back one of our very own brothers. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. This time and not for the last time, for Katlego Mapuwe! Yes, man. Woo! Yes, man. Oh, oh, my goodness, thank you. What time is it? My, oh my <laughs> word, really? <laughs> oh man. Uh, family, family. Welcome home, buddy. Family, family, family. family. Look, look at you guys, though. Look at you guys. You, you all look absolutely incredible. You look amazing. Yeah, and I it's, can feel uh, your energy. Beautiful to have you back, brother. Oh. <laughs> Good morning, South Africa. <laughs> wow, what a, what a privilege it is to be back in your living rooms again, to be able to welcome you to a new day with an incredible team in front of the cameras, behind the cameras. It's been such an incredible time uh, leading up to this day, uh, especially you know, with the backdrop of what was an incredibly unfortunate time and unfortunate circumstances that forced me away from this role that I, I loved so much and that I know you love so much, uh, what we do every day in trying to bring smiles to South African faces and trying to rekindle hope every single day. And, um, you know, in that same reflection, understanding the, and accepting the, the decisions that I made and the actions that I took that were deeply regrettable that, you know, um, had me moving away from this role. Um, I've come full circle and I've come home and it really does feel like a homecoming. Um, every single person in the set has been welcoming and has been saying words of encouragement and I've been feeling it not just um, here but outside as well. Um, South Africans have been absolutely magnificent and I thank you so, so much and especially at a time such as this where we are as a country, I really, really appreciate the opportunity to come back and to say Thank you. Oh, man, we needed an opportunity to reconnect. And last week, I sat down with Kalejo to catch up on the time that we had missed. And bear in mind that because of the craziness of those two years, not just in your life, but in all of our lives, and certainly it was in mind, this was the first time that Kat and I had been able to sit down and really connect in almost two years. Take a look. How's it, bro? How are you, boy? It's good to see you. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> what did that feel like walking back into the studio? A lot has changed. Yeah. A lot has changed. I didn't know what this would feel like. The kitchen still smells good, though. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I, I don't even recognize the place anymore. Um, <clears throat> felt strange, it felt good. It felt you know, welcoming like, like home. It's just home that you haven't seen in a long time. Um, I, I think that I've always had this, this terrifying fear in me that you would get to a point where the new you wasn't the old you <laughs> and that this wasn't going to be a part of that and maybe some of the, the longest and the, the most arduous and, and most transformative journeys bring you right back to where you started. Yeah, um, I think you're right. To a certain extent, <laughs> the new me 
is not the old me, but there are certainly elements of the old me that remain um, that I think have stood me in good stead. And you know, throughout whatever it is that, ha that has happened over the past couple of years, I think one thing that I could never want to even let go of is this desire that I have to um, be a force of positivity in people's lives and have them smile and you know have them be a part of whatever it is that I am a part of and walk out of that situation feeling better than they were when they got there. So um, yeah, obviously there have been many touch and go moments where self-talk self-identity was questioned like who am I what am I here for what am I good for but I've worked my way through it um, with the help of friends and family and just the many people whom I've met in person or on social media that have just constantly had this message get up get up like no matter what just get up and start again and we'll be there to support you, we'll be there. You, you can't pay for that. Well, that's the, the groundwork that you've laid for the, the 15 years of the career building up to this, this pivotal moment, this time, this, this, this gateway that you were pushed to go through. Sometimes life maybe <coughs> gently nudges you, sometimes it punches you in the face, sometimes it takes a sledgehammer and smashes you over the back of the head. Yeah. If you think back to that time, which I don't even know if you've got cogent thought in that time, and I, I don't expect that you have got it all laid down, but if you go back to that beginning, that when the world started to transform so dramatically around you, did you have any inkling when the dominoes started to fall of what was coming? Not at all. Not, no. I think for a large part of my life, you know, even pre expresso things were just in such a locked mode and in such a beautiful flowing mode you know it was the engines were working um, it flowed from one thing to the next so effortlessly and so as the proverbial sledgehammer you describe <laughs> going at the engine um, when it happens all you can do or all I could do for that moment is step back and look at the pieces of what lay around me and mourn it because I did I had to mourn it it was a death of sorts yeah. if you will but at some point um, you know you can either sit and mourn for a very long time to the point where um, you don't know how to even get up anymore or you you make the decision that no matter what today I have to get up I will find a reason to get up and put that one foot forward and then hopefully you do that enough one foot in front of the other every day until the reason that you started with has cemented itself somewhere in your being so that you generate a momentum again and you can start picking up the good pieces of what was broken and remold them into something new Wow, buddy, yeah. I, uh, I've got to ask, because every time, uh, we've been like two planets like this, and every time I come near you, I can feel it overwhelming, and I just, we step away, we step away, and every time I thought that I'm okay, someone else has come up to me and asked, are you excited, are you ready, are, are you, you okay? excited? Are you Hundreds okay? of people have stopped me in the street. What has the response been like for uh, you yeah. this week, building up to this moment? It's been, it's been absolutely incredible, like, the, the, it, and I think the first thing that I read this morning was a reflection of that. Uh, my mom sent me a message saying, this is the day the Lord has made and we'll rejoice and be glad in it. And on, on Saturday, we had the show uh, Wonder Women with uh, yeah. Ewan Cast there celebrating Wonder Women. And um, I got off the stage after my first song to go and perform on a platform. And a uh, you know, lady came out and, and hugged me and said, I'm looking forward to Monday. And she didn't let go for like five <laughs> minutes. <clears throat> so that's been the kind of response um, that I've received and then the warmth and the empathy and compassion from, from people has been, it's, it's inexplicable to me. Um, and it's, it's truly just, just so humbling um, to have been able to go through, through the week and have, like I said, South Africans just look forward to this day as much as I've been looking forward to it, as much as my family's been looking forward to it. And um, it, it really is just 
truly amazing, so thank you. I'm glad your family is around. Exactly. And very present. I, I, I mean that in the very yeah. broad sense of community. Um, well, it's not inexplicable. There's a reason, dude, and it's because we love you, and we've missed you, my friend. <laughs> and if you want to get a sense of just how much this man has been missed, let's put it to the people. Um, we asked you guys to send through some of your voice notes. Let's hear what you had to say. Uh, hi, um, morning espresso team. Morning. And to you, Katleo. Oh, wow. Um, I'm grateful. I'm happy that you're back. And I wish that all things will go well in your way because I know how it's like to go down that road that you went through. Mm. And to remind you that you're not only a survivor, but you're a conqueror. So may all your wishes come true and may God bless you. Uh -huh. And hopefully you'll come, hopefully the new person that you are, you're bigger, better, stronger than ever before. Wow. Thank you. Oh, wow. There's a little bit of wisdom there. Wow. Is this a space open on this couch? <laughs> I, think wow. I, feel like I need to serve to one to join us. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh I gotta ask you, brother, what is that what is that feeling genuinely like? I mean, coming from a place like that and having this overwhelming love showered on you in a stage that you've shone on, but yet you've had this trembling sensation of like, I'm not sure what that response is gonna be like. What does that love feel like, man? Now in that moment. It makes what we do here feel so real. Mm. Um, this is not just uh, an it's interaction a with a camera that ends. Yeah when it's not one dimensional when yeah. nine o'clock hits it's not one dimensional it's reciprocated we have a family and a community that we have been pouring ourselves and our hearts into over more than a decade mm. and to see that love reciprocated in real form gives me oh man like i said at the beginning as well especially in terms of like some of the biggest challenges that we've been going through as a south african community it gives me hope that like we can do this we can make this work and see the other side of so many of the challenges um and it all starts in the in those pillars of community that we that we form um so yeah well to answer your question it's um, man it's incredible. <laughs> incredible. It's your tribe, buddy. Your tribe. You know, your tribe it's, uh, it's... <laughs> That's the way that it works, my friend. Um, let's hear from more of these um, incredible people that are feeling just as good yeah. as we are about the return. Let's hear some more voice notes. Oh, good morning, Fakta Nominated Expresso. My mm -hmm. name is Tedisele Machola. <laughs> oh, welcome back, kids. Welcome back. I just want to say there's a verse in the Bible that says, I forget what's behind and I stretch myself to what lies ahead. Yeah. With those words, I want to say what's behind can only be a lesson, but not a hindrance. So mm. what lies ahead head is greatness mm. uh, you deserve it you deserve to be here we are happy that you are back uh, continue to fly the SA flag so high we are so happy <laughs> It only took us 15 minutes, my friend. I'm going to let you process that. It is undoubtedly a massive day, not just for our cat man, but for this entire family. And we now know that this family extends very much to you guys at home. Thank you so much for the outpouring of love. He's going to need it today. We're on shaky ground this morning, but we are loving having Cat back wow. in studio. Keep those voice notes coming. 063-408-8863. You're going to have to learn that WhatsApp number, dude. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> we'll bring you back up to speed, buddy. It only took me about six months to get it right. Hashtag oh. cat is back. We'll see you in a mo. It's my feel good worthy
Welcome back. If you've had just tuned in and have possibly been sleeping on another planet for the last two years, you're in for a surprise today. Kat is back. If you're wondering why there is such an emotional energy in this studio, finally, after two years, Kat is back with his Expresso family, and I'm sure he's missed one thing, oh, well, a lot of things, but this one thing in particular. He mentioned the beautiful smells coming out of, out of our kitchen. Today, he's back in there with one of his favorites, and she's undoubtedly going to love seeing this face again. Right back in the kitchen again after such a long time. And it feels like this is the welcome home that I just really was looking forward to. Um, really exploring flavors and food, and especially those that really have been such a comfort for me over the past while. Chicken soup and pasta, uh, the ultimate winter comfort food. But I mean, what's more comforting than being back in the kitchen? I couldn't imagine uh, a better way of starting out my morning. And this particular dish has been very special to me because it's something that my son and I have shared over many meals and it's one that I've really really loved as that hearty homemade winter meal and our mama on the show Jenny Morris has promised that she's going to show me how to make it properly from scratch with that true heartfelt emotion of a mama Jenny it's so so good to see you and don't even go there. No, I'm serious. You, we, we, we know. I've, I've actually had the chance to bump into you and be at your restaurant uh, in the last two years a couple of times, and I cannot say enough to you how much your words of encouragement meant to me, and especially as someone that I do see as a mom figure coming such a long way from the times when we used to oh be in Oh, my goodness. Sequent. How many years? In how many years has it been? Yeah. And yet here we are doing it again and I'm it's it's so good to see you there. darling this is not a phoenix it's a chicken but you are the phoenix and you've risen <laughs> from the earth. and I, oh. just, I just think it's so amazing and um, yeah this is chicken soup for the soul oh I and love I it I just think this it. is something that every mama wants to give her child wow it's comfort and love and give me a hug oh, my <laughs> goodness JD thank you thank you so much you know how much I love you, you know I love you I too love you. and I don't think you're gonna get away with me doing all the work okay? oh you never that's Karen's never the case great. we never do that and I'm ready for this my, my hands have been itching um, so where do we begin um, we've what? got the chicken in and the some, pot and some onions because those are the most important things uh -huh. and I'm gonna put some carrots I'm into this and I like the whole chicken because it's got all the bones got the meat that delicious fat that comes out of the skin sorry Absolutely. no that's a couple that's of good. tears in the pot oh. now this is very good it's called seasoning it's called, <laughs> it's called seasoning, seasoning <laughs> indeed <laughs> And what I love the most about this is that, you know, you've just added some celery, you've added some carrot. This has been delicious. Soups, homemade soups, have been some of the easiest ways that I've been able to get my little one to take yes. in a lot of vegetables. You're just so, like me. I had all the vegetables in a soup. So from a, you know, uh, Papa, I don't want to eat this, I want to eat that. I'm like, okay, you, you want chicken soup? Because we actually call it corn soup. Oh, I love it. Because the one that we have <laughs> yes. has corn in it. It's like a Chinese one. Exactly. Love and then it. I just add a variety of different colors in there in terms of vegetables and then at the end of the day, he enjoys the entire mix. Okay, so what am I doing here? So what you're going to do here is you're going to grate me some extra carrots. All right. I'm going to be perfectly honest. Um, I burnt the onions. That's all right. <laughs> wow. Are those the onions that are the the? It's granadella. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. Okay. We'll, we'll we'll look past that for a second and pretend that it it was it part of the happen. garnishing. It was meant to look. It's going to give you an extra burst of charcoal flavour. No, you know what it is. It's the garlic. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry, but I was a little bit overwhelmed. Ah, welcome um, back to the first day. <laughs> okay, which side of the grater am I using I for I would like the rough ones? side, the rough the... side, and I've left the skin on for you, yes. other side, darling, so the big ones. So this is over here. You know, Jenny likes it big. There, there we go. Go. <laughs> go. And long, long. There we go. There we go. That's All right. It. Don't break your fingers. Okay, yes, I've got to be very careful And you know that. what? What I've done is I've left the skin on, guys, because all the nutrition lays beneath the skin. And Absolutely. this is a lovely clean carrot. So give it a good old wash. Yes. Um, and then you can use the whole thing. But I, the, the thing is, when I get um, vegetables, I, I clean them. I give them a bit, a bit of a rinse, but yes. I'm not too pedantic about it because I yes. think, you know, it's come from the earth. It's yes. A, yes. A lot but, that's... But very important um, that you clean. take all the sand off because Absolutely. it can be a little bit Okay, yeah. Be careful dangerous. not to break your fingers. Oh, this is it. smelling delicious. Now, what I'm going to do with this is just let it simmer and cook itself out. Mm -hmm. And once the, the chicken is nice and soft, you could take two forks and almost just take it off. Yes, off the bone. Take it off the bone. Yes. Um, and, oh, look here. 
and then I would put a lid on it and then let it go nice and slow because you want that chicken to do a little swim around. Yes, in the pot, you, you okay? need time for this, right? So absolutely. you want to you make it nice and early. I'm, I'm thinking like load shedding and how that might oh, affect absolutely. you making this it as soon freeze. as you get home. This would freeze beautifully. Now, Kat, I've got some chili, yes. which is an option. I like a little bit of heat, you know, sort of under um, mm -hmm. underlying mm -hmm. um, depth and some pepper, some beautiful black pepper. Lovely. Now, here's another little tip. Um, if you don't want the soup to be too hot, put the chili in close to the end. Because the, oh. well, the longer the chili cooks, the more <laughs> it's going the to more extract. more those, those uh, capsicum... Uh, yes, um, yes. Kind of uh, flavors it releases. Okay, but then I'm obviously impressed, capsaicin. Really, you oh, look at you, oh, Jenny. We what haven't been we haven't see. been doing this for a decade <laughs> and don't know words like capsicum. Or, you know, um, but so but the, obviously then warn your eaters that there is a little bit of chili, there and if you're doing it for chili, little yeah. ones, maybe avoid the we'll chili. Put chili on the side. On the know, side, yeah, for the big people. That's a great way of doing it. Okay, so I've grated your carrots. Here Give they are. Where would you like them? Give me a nice handful. Oh, right, let's you know what? Take them in your beautiful little hands and make your way to my pot. Okay, don't. And let's do this with a little bit of attitude. Shall I actually bring the entire? Um, can no, I do that? Then? No, do this. Oh wow! Here we go, like that. Yes, hold it nicely, and walk to the pot. Ah, oh, we got want, some on the floor. With a little bit of attitude, slowly, and don't drop it. Oh. Like go down, down. Here we go. There down. we go. Do we do we have do we have live slow mo? I don't know if we do. Here these we things. go. Here we go. Shall we sing? There we go. Shall we sing? Tiny bubbles. <laughs> Look at that. That's exactly what so I want. Divine. Yeah, Make me, me happy. happy. I Make love me it. feel fine. There we go. There we go. Dini, Dini, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I All right. Love it. So we're going to let this go on for a little while. And then ultimately, yeah. you said how long again in the pot? It's, I would say about one and a quarter hours. It depends. Mm -hmm. You know, but I've made you some. Lovely. Okay. Thank you so, so much. A great way to be welcomed home. Um, and of course, to get this recipe and the ingredients list, you can head on over to our website, which is expressoshow.com. I haven't said that in ages. <laughs> there you go, my darling. That's lovely. I love the way you did that. Mama. Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you out of the break. That's great. Oh, it's wow. my feel good the show. Defeat your mucus monster, Mucophys. Loosen mucus and phlegm for clearer airways. Brought to you by Pharma Dynamics. What, what do you want to play? The people we love are the ones that need us most. They'll always need a place to call home and opportunities to build their future. That's why I took out life insurance from Old Mutual, so he'll always get what he needs, even if I'm not there. Get 5 million rand life insurance for only 509 rand per month. Speak to your advisor and help your family get ahead of life. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> getting there, getting there slowly but surely. It's uh, an experience, I can tell you that much. Oh, step by step, my friend. Welcome back to you guys to a very special edition of your Feel Good Breakfast Show today, where, of course, we get to welcome back our brother, Cat Is. 
back in his home. <laughs> and uh, one thing is sure, um, entertainment, especially live television, is all about striving for perfection. I think that's ultimately that peak that we're going for. Capture the greatest shot. Adorn yourself in the finest threads. Present to others and yourself, of course, in the best light possible. That's yeah. our job, is to provide that platform. Yeah. And never, ever fumble over your words. Don't know if we'll get that right. Now, when we propose, uh, <clears throat> is to perfectly portray yourself to bring joy to others, you can start losing the ability to maybe see that human side of yourself. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that I've come to terms with uh, in a big way. Um, I'm not perfect at all. Um, no one is, and that's the, the humility that one takes on board and the grace you then give yourself of just being human. And I think that came obviously when the cameras and the lights stopped rolling and um, I just had to face myself and had to come to terms with that flawed person that I am and in that, in that acknowledgement you then find ways to one step at a time take the decisions and make the decisions that you need to make um, in order to be a better you and it's an ongoing journey because it doesn't stop you do it every single day um, and it's just uh, I think I, I, I couldn't be happier and prouder of the person that I become now and I look forward to the person that I'm going to become in the future. And we are loving the fact that we get to connect with this person that is becoming. So let's head back to the little catch-up that Kat and I tried our best to, to work through a couple of weeks ago ahead of today and take another step in this journey. When everything else is stripped away, and this is something again that I've been trying to, to grapple with and I've, I could have used your perspective along the way what do you know about your, your character now that you've been forced to sit there and take that kind of audit, take that kind of look into yourself and what, what are you left with when everything is, is stripped away and how did you find that way back? What was that reason? I think the acceptance of imperfection definitely sticks out. Not that in any way, shape or form I had ever regarded myself as being perfect, but the pursuit of that perfection that is elusive and perhaps unattainable that I was constantly on the path of and trying to to touch and the acceptance of that imperfection that I'm an imperfect human being and that is in its own way quite beautiful that realization came to me even more so once I had my son each time I would look at him and look at the way that he looks at me and how he uh, tries to imitate me in certain things that he does, I had to, to find a certain stability within myself to, of acceptance where perhaps he would learn in the years to come to accept himself for whom he is. And I, <laughs> I, I kept saying this almost as a way of hearing it said out loud as, man, I'm made of strong stuff. Like, I have to believe that I'm made of stronger stuff than this. I look at my son who's four years old now and I imagine that life is going to throw all kinds of challenges his way. And I'd like him to have that voice inside him that says no matter what, I'm made of strong stuff. Like, it's an important part of one's character. For me, it's pulled me through some of the darkest, darkest times. Touch and go kind of moments. What was the darkest moment? Was there a moment where you thought maybe you'd gone, you'd been pushed too far? Of course, of course. And I think in the very beginning where, you know, that picture that you painted, that everything, it didn't matter whether it was 10, 15, whatever years that you put into something, everything at one moment became impermanent. And there was a moment where, you know, I thought the darkest thoughts and I don't want to belabor the point too much. I think everyone goes through their own individual trials and you think, but wouldn't it be better if it was just done? Just quickly, now, done. And then, you know, my family wouldn't have to worry about having to call me every deal day. With <laughs> deal with this, all of it. <laughs> um, but then that's where the reason, right? The reason for it all needs to come from somewhere. And for me, that was Phoenix. Uh, yeah. It's hard to put into words what, and I, I think you would know it, 
have, having two beautiful little ones and what they mean to you. And I think many of the fans especially would have found it inexplicable to see you making the choices that you were making, withdrawing in the way that you were. I could understand it completely. I could understand every single pressure point saying, OK, what would I do for my son? I'd, I'd deal with it. I'd endure. I'd endure and I'd take it on. Doesn't matter. You will endure anything for your son. Yeah. But you're now at the peak of your powers. And I used to tease you about the, the skill set that you had and, and probably push you a little bit too hard in some areas to maybe kick off on the, on the musical front a bit more, which we'll get onto <laughs> in a moment. But to have faced that, and this is something that you and I would report on every day, the, the, the likes of the, the Will Smiths and the people going through these, these gateways where so much of how we see ourselves is built from the perception that we get. And we live on this platform where we get that en masse. You were the most talked about, most searched celebrity in South Africa for a particular period. And I remember seeing that on that, that day and just thinking, this is, this is art imitating, life imitating. It was madness. It was absolute madness. Have you been able to reconcile that? I think the importance of the positive use of the platform that we have has been emphasized a million times over. It's, it's become so important for me to have a conscious separation of the work that I do and who I am and uh, who it is that I am behind the scenes when I seek that separation of life and have confidence that that is okay because everyone is doing that. We are all as human beings trying to figure it out. Read all the books you want, attend all of the lectures you want and it's great to be able to take from those instances and steal some nuggets. But you have to figure out your own recipe. Part of the, the passion for me from the very beginning, 12 years ago, 2010, when we started this show, was the idea of waking up and having a South African, wherever they are and whatever's happening in their life, to make the choice to tune into that show called Expresso, because in it, they find some semblance of being, they find some meaning they find some purpose, they find a perspective that lights the way for the day. And I think we forget that that is a two-way flow. Yes, we give that, that's our mandate to be that, and authentically we do do that. That's been the one thing about this show is it, it's authentically feel good. It's not lip service, we actually do that. One thing I didn't realize or that's been re reinforced is that we get that as well. And I think what really, when, when I rely, <laughs> so heavily on that as a survival mechanism being going through the, the challenges that we have and I think of you being in the space that you are not having that on tap how did you find that where did you get that energy was it you know that feeling of when you you know you've gone out into the world and you've explored everything that there is to explore but then there's always home and you go back home and you realize the importance of home I remember um, you know about one and a half years into it I'd, I'd literally coop myself up into my apartment and didn't see outside for quite some time and I decided I'm just gonna go home for a good three days just for nothing else but just to be at home and my mom and my aunt cooked one of those typical seven colors <laughs> Sunday meals and I sat there looking at this plate and you know memories of how I grew up and the people that have poured so much love into my life to bring me to where I am just came flooding back and I I cried over that plate. And I think when you talk about that ebb and flow that we experienced, well, let's say being partners on the show and with everyone that we've worked with, those people became more than colleagues. It, it was family, it was a community. And I was very, very fortunate that that village for me existed not only in my close circle of family and friends, but even stretched outside to the social media world, to people who every day, without fail, there would be an email a message and you go oh, wow okay so if uh, or Johnny or whatever okay they care okay then maybe there is something to kind of move forward towards and you build the strength up to kind of get up and you know eight months nine months later I found myself on the promenade and I just took this picture of the ocean which has always been such a beautiful place for me and I decided, well, this is where I come alive again. And yeah, it was quite crazy, the, the response and the reception that came about after that and just humbled me even more. And um, I'm ever so grateful because if it wasn't for those people who, you know, every day were saying, come back, stand up, 
we got you. You can do this. I definitely would not have been where I am right now. On the shoulders of giants, my friend, um, we are fortunate enough to have an incredible community. I jokingly yeah. call them our tribe, but that's how deep these connections go. Now that you're back here, how does it feel? Does it feel different? You look like a different man. Mm. Does it feel different being in this space? It does, because it, I think it comes with a different set of tools of life and consciousness and awareness. Um, so it does feel different, uh, but I think in a very positive way. Um, I'm, I'm looking towards the future of my journey with you guys and the rest of the team um, with massive amounts of, of hope and, um, and a lot of love for you guys as well. So, um, yeah, <laughs> it feels amazing. There's a lot of love flying around, not just the <laughs> studio, the entire country right now. The voice notes have been coming in thick and fast. Let's catch up with a few more of you beautiful souls, hear what you had to say. Hello, Kaki. So, my name is Nogutula Yvonne Ulu. I'm from Ulu. the Val. Uh, welcome back. Welcome back. Mm. I missed you. I know all of us, Mzanti, we missed you. Thank you. We love you. And regardless, you are human too. So, mm -hmm. there is no saying. <laughs> so, as long as we acknowledge and learn yeah. from our past and move on yeah. and be stronger than forever. You are our guy and you make us happy in the morning express. So, so welcome back. You. Looking forward to looking at your show again. So much love. Love you. Aww. <laughs> Lots of <laughs> And you know, it's, it's, it's that, um, the, the, that awareness and the, and I, I know it sounds like an easy thing, but I think we all go through our own individual life challenges to get to that point of understanding that you're human. Yeah. And so you are fallible. You're going to make mistakes. Lots of mistakes. And the point is, like the lady just said now, to learn and to move forward. forward. You've got to move forward. There, there could have been many reasons for me to look back and be bitter and all these silly things, but it was about moving forward and I had to do that for, <clears throat> not just myself, but for, for so many other people out there that um, I think face even greater challenges, far, far greater than, I, than I've gone through. I think there's a reason why so many people are tapping into this because this has been the human condition for yeah. the last three years is everyone is searching for resilience and a way to stand back up. And I think this is inspiring so many people to have their say this morning. So let's hear from more of you on how you are feeling about Kat's return. Hi, my name is Andre. And um, I'm, a, I'm a very big fan of Catlejo. And I'm watching, I'm watching Expresso since the beginning. Since the beginning, Katlejo is one of the reasons why I watched, I watched um, Express and I'm just glad they gave him another chance because um, I, know he, I know he made mistakes. That's, you, that's part of being, being human. Mm. That's part of, um, of life. And I, I'm just glad that they gave him another chance. He has a talent that's the same as a rugby player, cricket player, soccer player. Wow. He must just be on television. I know he's an accountant by trade, but <laughs> television is his <laughs> talent. Same like Carl Wasty, radio is his talent. Wow. Grateful you didn't pick up the textbooks again. <laughs> <laughs> that's not something that's like this. You didn't go to the court rule. <laughs> I actually did. Oh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, um, I, I, I'm doing my, my postgraduate diploma in business management. Oh, wow, and okay. So, that, that's how I've been keeping myself busy up over and above being a dad. Um, I'm studying towards that with the idea of um, gaining my MBA in years to oh, come. Oh, wow, so, man. Yeah, I've, not particularly textbooks yet. <laughs> that's, that's not part of the modules I've registered for for this, yeah. for this semester. We haven't lost them to the dark side, all due respect. <laughs> oh, well, please keep oh, we love it. voice notes coming. Our WhatsApp <laughs> line is open. It's 063-408-8863. You just took me back, dude. <laughs> <laughs> It's my feel good birthday
take lashes higher. New Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. The curved brush volumizes and lifts lashes vertically for a wide-eyed lash look. Hemp seed oil conditions for healthy looking lashes. Go higher. New Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. Yes, hashtag Kat is back online. Show him some love. That's right. And WhatsApp us on 063-408-8863. But let's get into those morning headlines one more time. Just gone on the hour. Of course, it's time to kick off official duties once again and starting on a national news front. Now, the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, has arrived in South Africa on the first leg of his three-nation African tour. Now, he will visit the Democratic Republic of Congo as well as Rwanda. But Blinken is scheduled to deliver an important speech in South Africa today on the U.S. strategy for sub-Saharan Africa. Now, climate change, trade, health and food insecurity will most likely all be the topics of discussion. Now, this is Blinken's second trip to Africa as Secretary of State after visiting Nigeria, Senegal and Kenya in November. I was thinking to our national news, heading over to Gauteng, where the community safety MEC Faith Mazibuko has called on all women in Gauteng to march to the High Court in Pretoria and the Union buildings tomorrow on Women's Day. Now this to highlight the country's high rape statistics. Now this after the gang rape of eight women allegedly by illegal miners in Krugersdorp last week. Now Mazibuko also explained and quoted, as women Women, we must stand up and fight to ensure that our rights and dignity are restored. Now, we are a democracy, but we see women forever being oppressed." Unquote. On that note, we head over from our national news headlines into international news. Now, hopes were high last night that a ceasefire between Israel and Palestinian militants will come into effect after three days of violence, which has left at least 43 people, including 15 children, dead. Now, Palestinian Islamic Jihad militants said the truce will begin at 11.30 local time, and that's in the evening, after talks moderated by members of Egypt's military. Now, local media reports that an Israeli official has confirmed the ceasefire. Now, the latest violence is the most serious between Israel and Gaza since an 11-day conflict in May 2021. On a different note, life expectancy is rising in Africa. Now, with uh, people living nearly 10 years longer, from 46 to 56 years, according to the World Health Organization. Now, the rise is due to better access to health services on the continent, although the numbers are, end quote, still well below the global average of 64 years. Now, this being said by the WHO themselves. But life expectancy data from 47 African countries between the years 2000 and 2019 was analyzed by the WHO. Now, it said the rise of life expectancy in Africa was greater than in any other region of the world. And now, of somewhat of a lighter note, and reporting on something very interesting indeed, Douglas Robert and Tamiris Muzini were ready for their big day in a posh upmarket seaside resort all the way out in a hotel in El Salvador. But Tamiris didn't know that there was someone else. Now, as the blushing bride arrived, she noticed a wedding crasher, a stray blonde dog mingling gently with guests. Now, not putting paw nor tail out of place, the ceremony commenced with the dog sitting at the doorway watching as if he knew what was happening. Now, after all was said and kissed, the bridal couple headed for the exit and the dog suddenly became extremely excited. Now, uh, Tamir said the following to say at the exit, he was asking, take me home, take me home. So they decided right there and then to make their happily ever after fit for three, adopting and naming the scrawny pooch Caramello. Yes, Caramello has arrived. Now, he has scars which suggest that he has, well, uh, his road to the exit um, has been a faithful day and had not been an easy one, but that's all behind him now. A quote also comes through saying that he's so loving despite everything he's been through. He still believes in the goodness of humans. Now, this being said by Tamir's herself, and she also says that he gives us hope. Now, this is something that is the theme of the day. We are talking about hope, but right now we're going to continue with the rest of the headlines, and the G-Man is standing by with the latest when it comes the sport. Thank you, Ryle. Hope indeed as the new Premier League season kicked off this past weekend with the defending champions, of course, Man City beating West Ham 2-0 in the final match of the opening weekend. And it was their new player, Erling Haaland, who netted from the spot and then added a second after half-time. Man United, conversely, on the other hand, lost 2-1 to Brighton in Eric Ten Hag's first league game. There also wins for Chelsea and Arsenal on the opening weekend, while Liverpool, they were held to an entertaining 2-0 draw against the newly promoted 
Fulham and Spurs were the biggest winners after beating Southampton 4-1. Then locally, the PSL season got underway as well this weekend with our defending champions, Mamelodi Sundowns, beating Cape Town City 2-0 in their first match of the new campaign. Then Gavin Hunt, he marked his return to Super Sport United with a narrow one all draw up against Chipper United. Orlando Pirates, they picked up all three points after narrowly beating out Swallows 1-0 in the original Soweto derby. And the uh, Soweto rivals Kaiser Chiefs are not so lucky. They opened their campaign with a 1-0 loss to Royal AM. Then victory uh, celebrations all round on the rugby front of South Africa. And sadly, South African scrum half Fafta Klerk and Wayne Kirtley Aronser were due to have medical assessments on Sunday after both suffered head injuries during their 26-10 win over New Zealand in the opening rugby championship match. So the Clark failed a concussion test after colliding with the knee of New Zealand wing Caleb Clark just in the first minute of the game had to be stretched off. And Aronser was shown a full red card after colliding in the air with Bowden Barrett with the Bok winger definitely coming off second best, knocking himself out in that clash. And they were pretty much the only blemishes on an otherwise superb performance from Jacques Ninova's side in which Aronser and Vili Leroux both scored to inflict a third straight loss on the hands of the All Blacks. Then on to our Commonwealth Games watch and cycling legend Daryl Impey has finished second to take silver in the men's cycling road race in another very successful weekend for Team SA in Birmingham. Then Nicolas Dalanga, he won silver in the men's freestyle 97 kilogram gold medal wrestling match. Dalanga losing by 9-3 to Canada's Nishan Randawa. Then Zeni Fanavoltran, a personal best of 54.47 allowed him to take bronze in the 400 meter hurdles or her rather to take 400 meter hurdle gold or bronze rather and then Simna Kiwe Bontmo and Pilo Kutle Nguni both picking up a bronze medals in the men's middleweight and women's featherweight boxing respectively that means SA's medal tally now stands at 27 for the games an incredible haul well, that's where we leave our sport for now let's get the latest out on the roads uh, with a bit of a traffic update from Zoe. Thanks, G. Let's take a first look at your roads this morning in Gauteng. In Stanton, there's been an accident on the M1 northbound after Woodmead Drive. One lane is currently blocked and it's causing delays, so please add some extra travel time to your journey this morning. Staying in Gauteng and Centurion on the R21 northbound, there's a stationary vehicle after the flying saucer interchange. That left lane is blocked and it's causing delays. Um, please be patient on the roads. Moving to KwaZulu Natal in Peter Maritzburg, there's a stationary vehicle on the N3 eastbound. It's before the Dr. Chota Matola Road obstructing that left lane. Please approach with caution. We'll have another traffic update for you shortly, but first let's take another look at your weather. And before we get into those temperatures, here's a snippet of heartwarming environmental news. Is that loggerhead sea turtles nesting in Georgia and the US hit a new high last week as the big reptiles beat their modern day best for most nests on the state's Atlantic Ocean beaches. With hatchlings still surging, the nest count reached 3,960 on Wednesday, the largest count in 33 years since surveys began in the state in 1980. The total beat for the previous record of 3,950 nests set in 2019, says the Georgia Department of Natural Resources. Even more impressive is the tenfold increase in sea turtles' nests since its lowest point of 358 nests in 2004. Loggerheads are a long-lived species that don't reproduce until 30 to 35 years of age. Weighing more than 130 kilograms or more, female loggerheads crawl ashore on beaches, dig a hole to the base of the dunes and lay their eggs, usually at night from May into August. Well, from some environmental news, we head on over to another look at those gorgeous sunrise views that you share on our WhatsApp line. For your 7 a.m. M -A well, for your 7 a.m. update, here is one that was sent in by one of our regulars, Emil Jones. Look at that stunning photo of the moon out in the distance as the sun begins to light up the sky in Buclu, Johannesburg. Wayne Adams shared this beautiful violet-colored photo out in George, Cape Town. Another regular, 
Gary Orcum shared this photo of the sun rising up from behind the ocean, causing the reflection across the sand out in East London. And finally, Brian Super shared this amazing photo of the Mother City. Just look at that orange glow across the horizon this morning, with the city lights still glittering and twinkling out in the distance. Don't forget to share those gorgeous sunrise photos with us. Our WhatsApp line is open. That number is 063-408-8863. Let's get into your temperatures. Heading over to Limpopo, if you're in Pulakwane, a low of 8 can be expected, a high of 27. Mbumbela, 13, reaching a high of 32 for today. Pretoria, 824. Johannesburg, 6 with a high of 20. Sunny Imahi King, 5's your low, 23 your high. Cloudstorm, 4, reaching a high of 20. Sunny in Kimberley, 5 with a high of 18. Bloemfontein, 218. Richards Bay, 14, reaching a high of 25. Partly cloudy conditions in Peter Maritzburg, 8 is your low, 23 your high. Staying in KZN, Durban, 14 with a high of 22. Mtata, 8 with a high of 18. East London, 12 with a high of 18. And some rain for today. Craddock expects some wet conditions, a low of 5, a high of 16. Kabecha, 12, reaching a high of 19. Moving to the Western Cape, George, rainy conditions, a low of 11, a high of 18. Cape Town, 10, reaching a high of 19. Worcester, 9, 22. Sutherland, 5, 17. And a sunny day in Uppington, a low of 6 and a high of 22 degrees Celsius. Well, that is your weather on your Feel Good Breakfast show. We'll have a final update for you shortly after 8. Um, thank you so much, Zoe. And I think because we're all grappling with this notion, and I don't mean just us, our little espresso family, and obviously with Kat's return in our immediate concern, but I think the entire world is thinking, how do we rise again? How do we pick ourselves back up and take that step? How do we rise like a phoenix from the ashes? We're bringing in an incredible panel to discuss this, and we want to hear from you, please. Any insights if you've been through a similar transformative journey? 063-408-8863. That's our WhatsApp line. Of course, one thing that really stood out for me is the fact that Kat loved the smell when he came back to the kitchen. <laughs> Are we going to carry on with just that? Put up another meal that he loved and thoroughly enjoyed mm. doing with his kid. So stand by, Mzanzi. The magic will continue. We'll see you in just a bit. It's my feel good breakfast show. New Revlon color stay matte like crayon. Play it up. Bold matte color goes on as easy as a crayon. Feels barely there. Super soft. 12 rocket popping shades. New Revlon color stay matte like crayon. Want to play? your feel good breakfast show indeed and we're putting the big emphasis on feel good welcome back this is expresso on s3 and this morning we are touching on the theme of trauma failure or loss and the feelings of fear and despair that comes with it now while it can certainly take some time to see the light at the end of the tunnel there are various tools to help you move forward Know that you have the power to make your healing journey an effective one. So today we've put a panel together and we are, it's all about rising from the ashes with our panel, a transformational life coach, Paolo Mendes, as well as inspirational speaker, Keenan Surf. Also completing our panel is musician, actor and entertainer, Emo Adams joining us here today. Gentlemen, good morning. 
Good morning. Welcome back. <laughs> to some of you. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to some of you. Also good seeing some new faces and I'm um, loving this discussion. I'm loving this because one thing I can definitely say right now this morning is a lot of people are resonating with this moment. Paula, maybe I can chat to you first, ask you, seeing as you're the specialist. I think uh, for, <laughs> for many of us, we, we, we deal with trauma and it affects us in so many different ways. What I think is maybe important to ask is how do we identify with, let's say, some of those negative coping me mechanisms that maybe come through and, and avoid that, essentially, and, and eliminate that from potentially happening. How can we make sure that we are aware of this? Okay. Yeah, we, we can get technical and go to the jargons and everything, but I think nobody wants that right now, <laughs> right? But we, we know about the denial phases, you know, how to cope with trauma and everything. Yeah. First thing is a denial and then anger and all that mm. stuff. But mm. putting that aside, dealing with us as human beings on a day-to-day -day basis, the first thing is identifying that you're gonna go for something that you know it's gonna be toxic to you, but you overruling the red s signs or the red, red flags, flags yeah. because you just wanna feel good in the moment. Mm. So identifying that's very important, is that it's what I'm gonna do, just give me some quick result right now, but put me in a worse situation afterwards, or is this solution that I'm seeking right now something that's gonna help me cope long term? Mm. So in other words, is that something that is sustainable? Is that something that's going to help me go through the problem? Or is that just something that's going to help me right now and perhaps put me in a worse off situation well, afterwards? More Band-Aid than anything else. Not really yeah, problem. We, yeah, we understand that, no? the mm. Band-Aid. But is this Band-Aid going to cover the wound and let it fester inside? Or is it going to cover in a healing process? Beautiful oh. analogy. Wow. And that is very, wow. yes, definitely. <laughs> Emo, I mean, in the entertainment industry, it loves you and it can be brutal too. Mm. How do you navigate troubled waters and, and who's someone you turn to or who do you turn to when you need that support most? First and foremost, I must say, I think to be on this panel, I need to grow a beard because... <laughs> <laughs> you got something going. I, yeah, I, I think a, yours is just upside down. Emo. You've full, got the. I get the full memo. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but I think when you have a beautiful face like yours, you don't need a beard. <laughs> well, 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 there you go. <laughs> no, I think I think it's, it's, you are right. It is sometimes difficult because when you are projecting positivity all the time, it's like where do you find your source? Mm. And I think maybe you touched on it a little bit, but I think for us being in the entertainment industry, it's very difficult to sometimes acknowledge the signs or see the signs because there is no blatant signs mm. as into, ooh, I'm in a funk right now, I'm in a state of depression, or I need a bit of positivity, and that's why you find people try to do walks and get in the right mental state, because I actually find as you have to love yourself first before you can love other mm -hmm. people. You have to make yourself mm -hmm. la laugh first before you, before you can make other people laugh. So it is actually um, a positive mindset, so I find the way to navigate through it is to take me time. Mm. Self-worth, understanding what that means, not letting the negativity of social media affect who you are or what you represent and the brand that you put out into the world. And I think maybe that is how it, it helps me to manage going from one audience to the next, projecting that positivity. I absolutely love this. I love this perspective. I love the silver lining. sign up with yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> but this is why we had an incredible panel, of course, and that's the reason why we're diving deep into this conversation. Maybe uh, something that I would love to hear from you, Keenan. I think uh, an, an analogy and something that's very true in, in, in situations like this is that when days are dark, friends are few. Mm. And as a friend, seeing someone in a position where you see them potentially struggling, you would hate to realize that too late. Yeah. You'd hate to be, I wish I was there for you. I wish yeah. I did this X, Y, and Z. Yeah. How can we as the support system that we all should be yeah. within our community and our friends, how can we become more aware of this? How do we reach this? I think the, the word is discerning. Yeah. How do we become more, more, more receptive to this and, yeah. and essentially be there yeah. when we need to? Yeah. yeah, firstly, I like the way that you articulate. I, I used to work in a call center and that, that articulation of yours, yeah. I feel like I, I, I need to sign up for the policy. <laughs> um, uh, but I, I, I think like for, for myself, I've been through like difficult days, especially like uh, recently. Mm. And uh, what I realized is before then, and when everything was going well and stuff, then it seemed like there was a lot of people. Like I seemed like I had a lot of friends yeah. and when times were, were difficult, um, I, I realized all of those people weren't around. 
And then uh, I think for me, it's just to keep your circle small um, because the ones that, that uh, care the most, they're the ones that are there during the difficult days. And after the difficult days and other things are picking up for me, I realize I have a small circle, but I'm fine with it mm. because those are the ones that, that call up um, and check up on me and stuff like that. And I care just as equally about them. So for me, I'd say, I hope I answer your question correctly, but for me, it's just to keep your, your circle small. Sorry, you know? uh, but that obviously means that it's, it's more so the type of people that adds value to you. Yes, 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 sorry. Yes. Quality over quantity. Quality uh, over I was quantity. Going to, yes. I was going to say that, that it, when we change the way we look at things, mm. yeah. then we realize that things are actually different than we perceived at first, yes. mm. right? So is it that at hard times friends are few, or is it a hard time shows you who your real friends are? Truth mm. is revealed. Mm. A paradigm mm. shift. So, so Who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping him around. My Who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> so so we, we get to that challenge that w if we change the perspective from are we coming from failure to ashes or from ashes to rising back life, back up and sorry. I'm from Brazil, English is a challenge. Oh, uh, my wife's gonna be like, you've been here for 25 years, shut up. And shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but are we looking at it like it was a failure and I'm trying to get back up or I was burned down, it's rising from the ashes, or is it a new birth, mm. Mm. a new beginning, a new opportunity? Mm. So when we look at what are we wow. doing in coping mechanisms, it's like I remember going through several challenges and I know what my escapes are. Mm. And I think that's the key word. Mm. And you use the word discernment, I love that word. Are we discerning how we're thinking, how we allowing that inner conversation to happen, right? So if I look at it, did I fail and I have now to do all the work to get back up, or what did I learn? Mm. And how can I invest in the new, better future now with the lessons I took in? Yeah. Mm. Oh, we are gonna Love continue it. dropping these truth bombs. This is what <laughs> the panel is all about. Keenan, Paolo, and Emo, they are not going anywhere as we continue this conversation around rising from the ashes or the reborn. What did I learn from it? What can I take from it as I enter into that new me? Please be part of this conversation. Our WhatsApp line is open. It's 063-408-8863. We will be back with our panel soon. Well, from rising out of the ashes and breathing new life into your fire, let's take that fire, uh, put it into the kitchen on the stove and then turn it to medium so we don't burn the ingredients. I'm joined by a face that I've missed dearly, Jenny Morris, and she's here to teach me uh, a, a recipe that I've really enjoyed thoroughly, although I think I've realised I've been making a terrible mistake. We're making the classic bolognese. It's a recipe that's rich, it's flavorful, uh, deeply satisfying, especially when you think about coming home. It's a cold night and you've got whatever choice of pasta and then you just put that bolognese on top. It's the ultimate home comfort food. And Janie, we were talking earlier on about this mistake I've been making. So every time I thought I was making a bolognese, the ingredients in terms of the spices I was yes. adding were actually creating <clears throat> a curry. Well, this is fine. Take the recipe and own it. So I, 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 was, I was mixing <laughs> India and Italy, and I don't know if that really works in the what part. What were we saying? We like um, it, it, what, it, it, Indo Italian? Is that uh, what Indo, well, let's call it Tell Indian. Tell Indian. A lovely wow. Tell Indian. Okay. Papradella. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the basics of any, any bolognese, uh, take me through the spices that okay. create <clears throat> that bolognese well, just taste. Think, just think about the Italians and, and what they. Basil, basil, oregano, mm -hmm. uh, you can use rosemary. All of those spices love to be um, in a bolognese. So yes. These are more like herbs rather than spices. Right. You see, that's the difference. Okay. All and right. I don't know if you've noticed, I, I thought, uh, uh, I'm not burning those onions again and pretending they were going to You've been very, granadilla. very careful <laughs> and, and you've watched over them. So you, you've started off with some onions and you haven't even browned them. You kind of got them to a translucent. Just to absent. Oh, look at you, baby. You have been away, but you're not away yeah. <laughs> okay, so you've gotten those going, and then you've added some bacon to it. Bacon is going to give it a lot of, lot of richness, smokiness, very salty. So I'm going to be very careful when we add the salt, okay, cat? Come. By the way. Put the spice, put the herbs in for your mama. The herbs, okay. These ones. And while I do that, the oil that you use, does it matter what yes. kind of oil well, you no, use? No, not really. You know what? Um, if, you, if you're going to use olive oil, use a good one. Um, or sunflower oil. Uh, just in Ning Ning. You, Wabona. Yeah, Ning Ning. Oh, wow. I was about to ruin <laughs> breakfast for everybody. But... <laughs> 
putting this entire container of salt. Okay, so just a little bit. Just a little bit because the bacon is very, very salty. Oh, of course. You got ah, these are the kind of things you think Absolutely. about. And the same over here as oh, well. Oh, pepper, you can whack that whole lot in here. All right, there we I've go. Got, there's a lot of ingredients, so it'll yes. take that. Okay, sorry. And then the meat. Just to get back to what you were saying, Jenny. Okay, so I have here, it's the base of most stews, mm -hmm. okay? So we've got onion, we've got celery, and we've got carrot. Mm -hmm. I've just rendered the bacon out so that all those lovely flavors can um, stick to the bottom of the pan and cook through. And then we just get this and let the mince just cook till it's almost changed color. Now we're gonna have some chicken stock because we want it to be nice and saucy. Now, here's the yes, thing. Yes. Chicken stock mm -hmm. with beef in a pot. How does that work? You Is can it, actually get away with that. flavors clash? Not really, but if you want you to cook um, uh, chicken with beef stock, it might make a difference. Oh. But who okay. cares and who knows? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, if it tastes good, then you just you tell just it. You just do it, perfectly. yes. All right. Now, we've got some tomato puree there. Yes. You, now, there's a big difference between puree and paste. Because puree means you've just taken the tomatoes and you've whizzed them up. It's a puree, but a yes. paste is where you've cooked them down to this wonderful, thick concentration. Which so you've reduced you, it, basically. You've taken right away down. the moisture to keep that, to it. intensify the intensify. flavor per... Absolutely. Now, you're going to whack that in for me, just in the little corner here. The entire thing. Oh, darling. All down. of it. Give it to Mama, here, okay, you can we use this. Here we go, I was looking yeah, for a spatula right. kind of thing to use, so there it goes. And some more olive oil, just some stick a little bit in oil. this corner. Thank you, Doki. Tiny bit, not much. All right, let's see how, how heavy my hand is. I'm like, going uh, to watch There we go, you. a bit more, because oh, you can you kind of look at the ingredients. Beach there onion. we go. Love it. All right, okay, good. Not so it's at tomatoes. this point where I think things start getting a little bit complicated, because you've just added an intense flavor. Of course, there was the seasoning um, yes. with the salt and pepper. There was the herbs, that's great. Yes. But the tomato really adds a kick, and you need oh, to yes. find a way to balance it so that it's not too... Some people put sugar, but I don't like a lot of sugar in my bolognese, sometimes because of the acidity. Right. But the balance will come in with the spices, with the salt, with the pepper. It's a nice savory flavor. Mm -hmm. Give me tomatoes, darling. All right, so these are fresh tomatoes that have just yes. been blitzed up. Yes. All right, and how, how many would be going into this? Uh, well, this is about 410 grams. You know what, you don't even have to use fresh, you can use a can. Oh! Nothing wrong with a can, convenient. darling. Oh, yes. I do like fresh, though. Me too. I do like fresh. I do. It's lovely, one, but the, we don't always have the time. You know, the thing is, there's a misconception about cans. Is that? Because, yeah, because they pick it fresh and they cook it straight away, babe. Okay, so you do straight, get, like, straight. that freshness sealed yes, into... Yes, everything sealed in, yeah. Okay. Give me some lovely chicken stock. Chicken stock, <laughs> and we can go all the way. All the way. And it's oh, nice and thick as well. Oh, look at that. And if you, if you, you, if you have the time... Um, you use the bones from, because remember early on we yes. made the chicken soup. From scratch. So then you take the bones and yes. you, you make a stock from scratch, right? Absolutely. That you can't beat. Yeah, yeah. That is just yeah, amazing. Yeah. If you want to put a little bit of something um, red in here, you could, you know. Mm -hmm. little, oh, yeah, yes. you know what I'm saying. What is that? What difference does that make when you add a little depth. bit of the vino? If, if, if vino gives it a nice depth, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, it cooks out, so it's non-alcoholic. Yes, yes, exactly. So now I want you to, I'm going to dish you some, because this takes a little bit of time, because you Shall need I bring to the love that pot. Plate. Yes, bring your plate and add some pasta. Don't be yeah. greedy now, because it left some, some for the crew. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know if this is going to be enough for everyone <laughs> on set today, but uh, I'll definitely leave some. I'll try I'll try and see if my um, food art skills are there we up go. to par. Oh, are they see. good? Huh? Oh, there we go. All right, get this on top. You want to create this perfect little mound of pasta. Oh, absolutely. And then you let the bolognese <laughs> cascade over it. There we go. Because we want to seep the pasta. Look at that. Another little tip, you know, when you're cooking your pasta, Try not to put oil in it, because pasta needs a big pot. It needs to swim. It needs to dance. Okay. Oh, some yeah. parsley and some beautiful parmesan so we're cheese. We're going to go parsley first. Yeah. And you don't have to use parmesan. You can use any cheese that grabs your fancy. I really hope the food it. team. I hope I'm doing this right. But doing um, it so beautifully. There you go. This looks amazing. So back to that oil on the pasta. Sometimes yeah. the sauce can't cling to it. Oh, okay, and that's what, okay. You see, and it, it rolls off it. You, you so. want your pasta to dance with the sauce, not yes. to be yes. at an arm's yes. length. So it just needs lots of water and uh, it'll never stick. It's beautiful. Okay, that looks absolutely amazing. Check yeah. out the recipe on expressoshow.com and I'll just give you this view, because that's what you want. <laughs> Look at that, the cascading uh -huh, bolognese over the pasta. Give it another little cheese. sprinkle of magic it? of green. How about, oh, with the, with the green. And the green it? too, yes. It's got the Italian flag there now, darling. We've got go, white, green and red. The green for the box. <laughs> They did an there amazing job this weekend. Oh, didn't they go. just, eh? 
I was at the I whales guess. match. I'm going to mm. take a break. But in the meantime, I'm going to take a little test <laughs> of this. See you in a bit. It's my feel good breakfast show. Get planning for a much-needed Johannesburg Urban Lifestyle Family Getaway. Rediscover cafes, restaurants, bars, galleries and museums to enhance your stay with our kids' stay and eat for free or 50% off on Second Room Family Offers. Marriott's portfolio presents a full and diverse range of outstanding hotels in Johannesburg, each uniquely designed with its own personality. Book now, enda.marriott.com. It's my feel-good breakfast show. <laughs> so our directors just said, please separate a little bit. No, yeah, like, no, it's not going to happen. What are we gonna it's not going to happen, gonna man. Gonna okay. oh, we're going to be joined at the hip. Why? Because he is back. <laughs> he is back in his home. This morning is a very special day. We've welcomed back our brother, Kat, into our feel-good breakfast show studio again. I haven't seen you so excited in a while. Oh, dude, and I tried to sleep last night, and I couldn't, man. I couldn't. <laughs> um, we've loved, um, obviously, catching up with you today, but Kat and I had an opportunity um, to chat. And I think one of the, the things I've missed the most is just stopping talking and hearing you talk. <laughs> I didn't right. realise you missed me on that, on that kind of level. But yeah, it's been absolutely amazing and uh, such a pleasure being back. And, you know, looking back at the conversation you had early on and you, you were reiterating the symbolism of the phoenix, right, which rises from the ashes. It's something that uh, has been strongly connected with me, not only just because it's the, you know, the name of my son, but it represents rebirth and it's a process that I've become very intimately aware of and familiar with over the past two years where I've become conscious and aware of, of myself and that journey to realizing, yes, you're a flawed person and that's okay. It, 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 there's nothing that beats the peace that, come, that comes with saying, yeah, and that's okay. And the fact that I'm aware of that right now means that I can make um, an effort to, to become better in the journey that, from a personal point of view, I am becoming the better man that I want to be for my son. I'm becoming the better father that I want to be for him. And we get to walk this journey with him. An incredible time to gain a new perspective. So let's head back to that conversation now that we had last week and chat about how this man's priorities have taken a major shift. Hopes and dreams. I used to look to you for my rudder because you were so ambitious. You were so goal-driven. And you were doing so unbelievably well in every facet of your life. It kind of felt like if I needed that little reality check or if I was starting to tap off in a certain area, maybe it was being on a stage and getting that, that space kind of locked down. Maybe it was looking at the side hustle, the idea of improving those skills, honing your, your talent, those sorts of things. I would always look to you. Wow. You weren't doing it all wrong. It's not like... Those dreams were bad dreams. That ambition was bad ambition. What are those dreams now? Is that still at the core of who you are professionally? Because you were getting it right, dude. You were absolutely wow. crushing it. And you've got it, and I'm sure that compounded the loss and that feeling of loss so much more. Are you still that same cat inside? Where are your hopes and dreams right now? Wow, what a question. Um hopes and dreams certainly still are there. I have an internal locus of control that is aimed towards something, but it, it, is, it is new. And those hopes and dreams, and I, I will never tire of, of saying this, 
are in my relationship with my child. And especially when I look at the fact that, you know, a lot of people look at the past couple of years and they look at the, the, the downside of it. You talk about the loss and all of those things. And I, I see the, the benefit that I have had a solid two and a half years of core quality time with my son. And nothing could ever replace that. No amount of money or dream or ambition or achievement or whatever could ever replace that. But yes, I, I want to take him around the world. I want to show him what the world is all about. I want to uh, impress upon him the, the importance of connections with, with human beings and being able to harness those and have empathy and understanding. It's when I look at his interactions with just, not just adults, but with his peers as well and how he, he handles himself in situations, it's absolutely amazing. Of course, I still would love to make a mark on the South African broadcasting scene, um, knowing and understanding how important this platform is in shaping the country every single day we have that responsibility on us um, there's my passion for music which will never be when am know. I gonna get my album that's all I'm <laughs> you trying need to, to stop asking me that question when the I pressure is too much <laughs> it's too much no, look, like I, yeah the but, single that's that I'm, I'm hearing about is yeah. enough I think. okay uh, yeah, so you've heard about that's it enough that's yeah, amazing enough. that's amazing um, that that box was, was ticked you know the crazy thing is <laughs> you, know, wow. you and I I think are because of the job are very good at talking the talk it's one thing kind of representing what a good dad is it's another thing having to earn that right do you feel that you've now earned the right to call yourself father because of what you've been through now wow and how important has that been for you and your your personal growth and development to understand what it is to actually be a dad to have gone through this journey because it's not just about you looking the part but you've had to walk it buddy well have I earned the the, the badge I think only one person could ever answer that and that's him <laughs> one day when he's able to articulate it um, I certainly have moments where I feel uh, you know proud of my dadding if that's a thing <laughs> and it's stupid things um you know like about a week ago he was trying to ride his bicycle onto a little ledge and he had fallen off and he became scared of wanting to do it again and it, it took me like a good 10 minutes to talk him through it to help him to understand failure you're falling as a metaphor, getting hurt, but then being able to get back up on the bike and try it again and keep trying. And ultimately he did it. And when he did, I, it's those moments that make me go, yes, yes, he got it. It clicked. What a, what a little champ he is, man. Yeah, there's, there's not much more that I, that I want to kind of delve into when it comes to him. And I think, yeah, I think it's, it's time that you, you don't get back. Absolutely. So I'm so, so glad that Absolutely. you've that. When I sit in this space, it's weird. It's taken all of about 15 minutes to feel this kind of click falling into place. When you sit in the space and you kind of feel that vibe and that energy, what did you miss the most about not being on this show, dude? I mean, you, you only need to look at the amount of time we spent now in conversation where, you know, walking in here, I was, a, I was a ball of nerves. I mean, I'd been here many, many times before, but it felt like the first time and the emotions ran high and I guess it was unavoidable. I didn't plan for it to be so, but here we are now. And I feel genuine love and warmth and it's reciprocated. The smile is, is real. It's that family, man. And I missed that because no matter what was happening in my life around me, I would always be able to walk through that door and know that there'd be a surge of like, welcome home, how are you doing today? You know, <laughs> and I missed that. I really, really missed that, that kickstart engine to the day. And we would walk out of here feeling like we could conquer the world Completely, every yeah. single time. And I missed that because I think it was a natural part of, of my bubbly energy that I, that I feel like I had. And, you know, for a time that flame was kind of extinguished. So being here, being with you again, and wow, it's absolutely amazing. 
that conversation is going to continue. I think we're going to have to put it online because I, every time I listen to it back, I realize how in my own head I was that day, just looking into your eyes. <laughs> You were. You had, a, your you had a particular glint in your in your left eye. I remember. And I want oh. you to get jealous, man. You're still, no. you're still my oh, baby, baby. You're still my baby, baby. You're still my baby. You got a plus one. The morning can't get can't get jealous. Have you seen that top knot? He's got? It's, it's right? the most enviable thing ever. I've been trying to do that all my life. It's not, so much is not coming together like that. Oh, we've had such an amazing, amazing response from you guys. Not just in this build up week, but this morning, the outpouring of love has been amazing. That's right. And we've asked you to send through voice notes and this one is the first one from Rushka Lee. Let's take a listen. Hi there, my name is Rushka Lee Pedro and I'd like to show my support to Kakeko and all the parties involved. It's not an easy situation when your personal life becomes a hashtag factory. <laughs> but as I said previously in one of my articles, I wish them all strength and kindness for the future. Thank you and good luck. Oh, thank wow. you, Rushkali. Thank you very much, Rushkali, and also to, to Elsie, to CBC Lenok and Alejandre for the, the messages as well. And yeah, I mean, Rushkali is right. I'd, I've never thought about it that way. A hashtag yeah. factory. Mm. When you're, and ah, oh, man, how do, you, how do you even conceptualize it or bring it into a frame of like how, it, especially like in those beginning days, it was so difficult to even go outside yeah. and like show my face. I, I was walking around with a with a mask, cap, and hoodie, <laughs> just to take a walk on the promenade, and you know, and it also emphasised to me like how real this is that we do, yeah. we, because it was about, for me, giving South Africans hope and what we do in the morning and putting smiles on people's faces. And when I couldn't find myself in a place where I meant it Good. properly, yeah. uh, mm. you, then I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, but uh, it's it's through the support of of many, 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 many people that I've been able to, to pick up the pieces and get up and get up again. And you have a lot of support. Yeah, expressing you have yourself. A lot of support. And absolutely welcome by you. And I've got another one here from Jocelyn, another voice note that we are dying to hear about. And let's see what love she has to share. A very good morning on this emotional Monday. I am so emotional. <laughs> Thank you, my special family, for allowing Kat and allowing us to say something. I've got no questions for you, my boy. But I just want to tell you that I love you, and we all love you. I'm so emotional for having you back. I don't know what to say. Thank you so much, my express of family. You keep your head up by my son, really. We love you, and God loves you. Thank you so much, my express of family. You guys love Joseph and Uncle God. Bye. Oh, One thing thank you, Mom, I, I have to ask you about that. Yes, sir. My son. My boy. My boy. You are like this nation's family, man. You are literally like a part of something so much more than just a presenter, just a community of people bringing life. You are a family of this country, man. You are like a prodigy of everything that we've gone through. And I think that's why South Africa is resonating with you so much. Do you understand that? In fact, do you feel that? Do you feel the, 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 the I don't know, that path of just, yeah, the, the, the humility in it all? I mean, definitely. Yeah, I, I what definitely, is that like? I definitely do. It's, um, it's very hard to express that in words, man. Mm. Um, but like I said to Graham earlier on, it is exactly that that gives me hope for the country. Do you know what I mean? Um, because we, we all grew up with that sense of motu, kimotu kabatu, the whole mm. essence of Ubuntu. And we, we are because of the people around us. You know, if it weren't for those thousands and thousands of people who kept, you know, the, the hashtag bring cat back mm. over time and people who showed me support at times when I couldn't support myself, I couldn't love myself because of that voice inside, that yeah. the, the internal judgment that you place upon yourself. And having this kind of support from South Africans, it's, it's humbling, man. And I, I can only hope that I'll be able to somehow return it to them in the value that I bring to the community in uh, the way that I do it, in the way that you do it, that Zoe does it, Graham does it, that we all do it because we all have a part to play. Like mm. this is, it's, it's a, it's an opportunity to just reinvest yourself back into the community and mean something really positive. And I'm really 
grateful for that. Oh, you are exactly that. Inspiration, positivity, and I think Mzanzi is absolutely resonating with this right now because we all share this sense of rising up, coming through from adversity, and that's exactly what we are talking about this morning. I'm absolutely loving this, and I'm loving the fact that you're joining in on the conversation and sharing that love, so don't forget, come through on our WhatsApp voice notes. It's 063-408-8863. We are here to bring that love, to share it with the world, and show you how much this means to us, and I think for the rest of Mzanzi too. My son, my boy, so good to have you back, man. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, Yes, Mzanzi, welcome back. Your Feel Good Breakfast show and what a show it has been already. Welcoming Kat back and talking about some pertinent conversations right now and carrying on with that. So, to rise like a phoenix from the ashes means to emerge from a, cat a catastrophe stronger, smarter, as well as more powerful. So, we're going to be continuing our conversation. We've got our panel, transformational life coach Paolo Mendez is in the building, as well as comedian and inspirational speaker Keenan Surf. And completing our panel, of course, is the musician, the actor, the entertainer. He doesn't have a beard but he's got beautiful hair. It's Emo Adams in Aww. the building. <laughs> yeah, to be honest. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Paolo, I'm going to ask you this question because earlier in our panel discussion, Emo spoke about how important it is to have the right mindset, that positive mm. attitude. For, I know you do a lot, you put a lot of focus on mindset development within your workshops, mm. but how can you encourage someone during a very difficult time to stay positive, to be optimistic, to tap into that positive energy when, when things are very dark for them, when things are not that easy? Okay. There's a, real, there's a little recipe I follow and I, and I teach that in the, in the workshops, which is remember the things you've been through before. Right, it it gotta come down. To, we we gotta come down to the point where you realize you're not here by accident, and that's not just some philosophical hoo ha. It's not some esoteric idea. It's it's reality. Life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. 
You, so there's a couple of beliefs that need to be worked on, and I work a lot on that, you know, self-limiting beliefs and, and framework in your mindsets and blueprints that you have in how you perceive life. So the first thing you should remember, life doesn't happen to you. It happens for you, right? Each one of us had a story where we started, we had dreams as a child, somewhere along life, those dreams were crushed, and then somebody came along, helped you believe, and then you overcame the challenge, and here you're now, right? On, and now you're here. And then something's gonna happen, it's gonna knock you down in a later stage, and you're gonna feel like my world is over, but it's just the rebirth, a new season, a new opportunity. Each new level, in life requires a new version of you, not a different person. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get lost sometimes. We compare ourselves with other people. And I think, but he's doing so much further than I am now. But he's in his own journey. He's in his own journey. You in your own journey. Mm -hmm. So what we gotta remember is that ground ourselves back. Like you were saying, you know, you gotta love yourself first. Yeah. I'm gonna start following you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta love yeah. yourself first and, and understand and accept this truth. You're not here by accident. There's a message in you. There's, 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 there's a gift that is in you that the world needs. Mm. And each of us together complete that puzzle. So stop believing the lies. Stop believing the negative self-talk. Stop believing the negative words from other people. Mm. And center yourself. And remember, what is my gift? What have I learned from my previous challenges? Mm. You, you didn't come this far to give up. Mm. In, in, in my culture back in Brazil, we have this, this little joke about like you, you swim, 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 like you, 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 you shipwrecked né, in open sea, and you swim, 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 and, and just before getting to the beach, you look at the sea sand or, or the sand by the shore in the beach, and you look, oh, I'm too tired, I give up. And you were like, Oh, a K away, yeah. you already swim 5Ks, yeah. you're a K away from the sands, and then oh, I'm too tired, I give up. So don't give up. First thing, don't give up. Second thing, remember what you've been through before. If you made it this far, it's not you, nobody's gonna drop you off now just before the end line, mm. right? And third thing is that, then what did I learn from the previous lessons? Because this new experience is not to break me. This new experience is to help me get to the next level I need to become. We can all be gifted something and arrive at a position, but how are you gonna sustain this position unless you learn the strength required? Yeah. Unless you develop the character and the personality for it. Yeah. So the challenges are ways in the universe, God, what you believe in, to strengthen you for the next level mm. that you need to be in. Oh. I absolutely love that. Paulo, I, I love the conversation that we're having right now. And I think just based on that, I think it's also important to maybe note that, yes, uh, support systems are important. Yes, we have all these uh, things, especially when it comes to maybe family that are out there for us, that are there to assist us. You know, maybe I can ask you this. For some of us, and this is the reality of the situation, that are not privileged enough to have family members, to have that support, how do you see a way for that individual to maybe turn to, or who should they turn to? What should they turn to in that position when they don't necessarily have that family support? What are the options? I like that question. Um, very detailed question, and there's so many avenues that you can go into, but mm. I think the most important thing is you have to make yourself the star player in the game. Mm. When you start dreaming, when you have a vision board, you're thinking of how do I achieve or how do I attain that goal? Mm. Negativity never seems to seep in. What slows us down from that goal is that you start focusing on the negativity that's seeping in as opposed to the destination that you're going to. Because when you have a positive <coughs> dream, you're thinking to yourself, for me being a boy chief from Mitchell's Plain, you'll one day I want to be a star. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. The goal doesn't entail, oh, all the negativity and all the gossip and all the people pushing you down. The goal doesn't entail all of those little things. Somewhere on that journey, your focus shifts and be like, oh, well, this auntie said this and they, I didn't get an applause this time around. And, uh, so now you're shifting away from what the end game is. The way I've navigated myself was knowing I'm the star player mm. in my game. Mm. Which means if negativity coming in on from the side, you are playing now on my field, which mm. means 
I make the rules to not this destination and this journey. <laughs> and I cannot deter because I'm not coming to you to your place and telling you how you should be playing Monopoly. Mm. 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 No, I like that. Not yeah. Monopoly. So, do not pass begin. <laughs> do not, do collect. not collect 200 <laughs> rand. And let me follow my journey because the most important, I think, tagline, you just said you, you have a saying in Brazil. We have a saying in, in, in Mitchell's plane, it's Ricard Gavassal. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but my point is, um, we have a saying, and uh, this is not a saying, but everybody knows this, but I think they take it sometimes too lightly as, when focused on anything, keep your eye on your ball. Mm. Don't worry about anything negativity or anything else that seeps in. Just keep your eye, which means be aware of your journey. Mm. Okay. Because when you become your own star player, that's when the self-love seeps in. That's when you know, oh, I'm, this is, I'm steadfast in where I'm going. I know who I am when I get there. And as he said, and maybe it touches on what you said earlier, the moment you get there, the new journey starts. And now you say, okay, so what is the next tools I require for the next journey? Oh, I love it. Oof. You all are dropping such truth bombs. You wanted to say something? You're talking about Monopoly, and, and I use this, this, this analogy of when you're playing a game, right? You have different levels. 100%. Yeah. And you just said now, for each level, you need new tools, new weapons, new, new defense systems. It's necessary. I'm a genius. I, oh. I can't. No, you are. <laughs> Keenan, we're going to end off with voice. you. Yes. I know you've been through your own struggles. How did mm. you mentally make that shift for yourself and take that first step towards the new you? Um, yeah, I think it's like, uh, like Emo said, is to be to realize like your power, your own power from uh, within. I also uh, went to therapy as well. It's good. I know a lot of. I'm from Lavendale. Emo's from Mitchell's Plain. I went to. Not many people from Lavendale would go uh, to therapy. Mm. You know, mm. they would go to other avenues. They go to friends, to other bad stuff or whatever. I just decided, no, I'm gonna go to therapy, and that helped. And I found that. Um, like, I, I do have the, the knowledge, I do have the, the power to love myself up and then within that, people look at me now and then they get inspired through that. So I think each of us all have our own story like that, where, like uh, Paolo said, where we overcame adversity and then we pushed on. So, yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful because if you look at an acorn, that giant tree comes from one acorn mm -hmm. and the message is everything you are is already inside you. Yeah, and I think 100%. we all need that reminder. Well, Emo, we're going to send you off to go and enjoy some music. Put the coffee down. You can leave it with us. This was such a beautiful panel discussion. Emo, Paolo, Keenan, thank you so much for joining us today. And of course, you at home, you're part of this conversation too. Our WhatsApp line is open. Kat is back. We want to share that with you and celebrate with him. So please keep those voice notes coming. Our number is 063 408 8863. So, Emo Adams is not only incredibly wise. But he's also one of the most gifted performers that we have in this country and a very good friend of Kat. And they've obviously spent a lot of time together on some of the biggest stages in the country, recently working on a Women's Day production this past weekend that took people's breath away. So there could be no better person to have here to welcome our man back into studio. And he's going to be performing something that's probably going to have us all in tears. Stand by me. Oh. Take it away, Len. <laughs>
Take lashes higher. New Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. The curved brush volumizes and lifts lashes vertically for a wide-eyed lash look. Hemp seed oil conditions for healthy looking lashes. Go higher. New Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. It's my feel good breakfast show. Yep, the man is uh, feeling like he's standing on top of the world, literally, in that moment. We want to share some more love. Cat is back. 0634088863. Drop us a voice note. Don't go anywhere. We still have one hour left of your Feel Good Breakfast show, but let's take a final look at those morning headlines. 
Yes, of course, it has just gone past the hour. It's time to kick off with our news front and starting on national news and something that I think South Africa will definitely be excited about. Now, South Africa's road maintenance backlogs continue to grow. However, Transport Minister Fikili Mbalula says a national program is coming to address the, black, the backlogs. Now, he says the launching of the Vala Zonke program will target potholes on the main roads and on the regional roads in the provinces. Now, as much as 40% of the provincial road network has reached the end of its design life, and approximately 80% of the national road network is now older than the 20-year design life. Well, sticking to our national news, the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, has arrived in South Africa on the first leg of his three-nation African tour. Now, he will also visit the Democratic Republic of Congo as well as Rwanda, and Blinken is scheduled to deliver an important speech in South Africa today on the U.S. strategy for sub-Saharan Africa. Now, climate change, trade, health, and food insecurity will most likely be all the topics of discussion. Now, this is Blinken's second trip to Africa as Secretary of State after visiting Nigeria, Senegal, as well as Kenya in November. From our national news headlines, though, we head over to international news and heading over to London. A London museum says it has agreed to return to Nigeria artifacts looted in the 19th century from the Kingdom of Benin. Now, Horniman Museum in southeast London said ownership of 72 objects would would be transferred to the Nigerian government. Now, items include 12 brass plaques known as Benin bronzes, a brass cockerel, and a key to the king's palace. Now, this follows a request by Nigeria's National Commission for Museums and Monuments in January. Now, the museum's chair said it was, and quote, moral and appropriate to return the artifacts. Now, next up in our news headlines, hopes were very high last night that a ceasefire between Israel and Palestinian militants will come into effect after three days of violence which has left at least 43 people including 15 children dead. Now Palestinian Islamic Jihad militants said the truce will begin at 11.30 tonight local time after talks moderated by members of Egypt's military. Now local media reports that an Israeli official has confirmed the ceasefire. Now the latest violence is the most serious between Israel and Gaza since an 11-day conflict in May 2021. Now, on somewhat of a lighter note, reporting on the news headlines, Douglas, Robert, and Tamiris Muzini. Now, they were ready for their big day in a posh upmarket seaside resort hotel in El Salvador. But Tamiris didn't know there was someone else. Now, as the blushing bride arrived, she noticed a wedding crasher, a stray blonde dog mingling gently with guests. Now, not putting poor nor trail out of the place, the ceremony commenced with the dog sitting at the doorway watching, as if he was knowing exactly what was happening. Now, after all was said and kissed, the bridal couple headed for the exit and the dog suddenly became extremely excited. And this is what Tamira has to say. She says, at the exit, he was asking, take me home, take me home. So they decided right there to make the happily ever after fit for three, adopting and naming the scrawny pooch Caramello. Now he has scars which suggest that he has rode, uh, well, he's rode to the exit that fateful day and not been an easy one. But... That's all behind him now. Now, here's a beautiful quote that I'd love to read out. He's so loving, despite everything he's been through, he still believes in the goodness of humans. Now, this being said by Tamiris, and as well as this, adding to it by saying that he gives us hope. Well, I absolutely love ending the headlines on this note. And for now, though, it's time to head into the roads, as many of you are on your journey, and find out what's happening with the traffic in here, Zoe. Thank you, Raul. Well, let's take a quick and final look at your roads in Gauteng, Kempton Park. There's a vehicle broken down. It's on the N12 westbound just before the Atlas interchange. Now, that left lane is currently obstructed. Please approach with caution. And if you are in Centurion in Gauteng on the N1 southbound, there's a vehicle broken down after Old Johannesburg Road. It's obstructing that left lane. Please keep a lookout for this. And staying in Gauteng at Salby, there's been an accident before the Crown interchange. Heavy delays can be expected add some extra travel time to your journey this morning well that's a wrap on your traffic let's take a final look at your weather
And a bit of news from the city of Cape Town is that various plans are in place to repair and replace critical water infrastructure that will assist with retaining water. Authorities are calling for support from Western Cape residents to save as much water as possible, with the province having recorded below average rainfall so far for this year's rainy season. Collective dam levels in the province currently stands at 63.6% compared to 76.6% a year ago. Mayoral Committee Member for Water and Sanitation Zahid Badruddin says they are addressing the issue. He said, and I quote, we are addressing this since the drought period. We have undertaken significant pipe replacement programs where we need to replace or repair pipes and also look at our water meters, making sure they aren't leaking. He also added that they will be further introducing additional zones into the city where they will be able to control unexpected leaks. Now for our final weather update this morning, let's take a look at those sunrise views. Adri Elise Kleinhans from Montclair and Durban sent us this pink sky cast uh, photo that casts a glow around the clouds and the palm trees in the distance. Then we had this one sent in by our international jet setter, Ridwan Hassan, who sent this one from Dubai. Just look at the sun's rays warming up the pearly white buildings. Thank you for that. And Vanessa Mulman sent us this picture picture from Centurion out in her front yard as the sun peeks through the greenery, casting a yellow glow in the distance. And finally, Rashida Dolly sent us this beautiful photo of the blazing sun out in GQ. Thank you for that. And if you would love to share your sunrise photos with us, please share it on our WhatsApp line. It's 063-408-8863. Let's get into those temperatures. Polokwane, your low is 8, your high 27 for today. Mbumbela, 13, 32. Pretoria, 8, 24. Johannesburg, 6 with a high of 20. It is sunny in Mahiking, 5 is your low, 23 your high. Klagstorp, 4, reaching a high of 20. Sunny in Kimberley, 518. Bloemfontein, 217. Richards Bay, 1425. Peter Maritzburg, 8, with a high of 23. Durban, 14, 22, Mtata, 8, with a high of 18. Rain can be expected in East London today. Temperatures ranging between 12 and 18. Craddock, 5 and 16. Kabecha, 12 and 19. Rainy conditions for George, 11 is your low, 18 your high. Cape Town, 10, 19. Worcester, 9, 22. Sutherland, 5, 17. And Uppington, a sunny day ahead. A low of 6 and a high of 22 degrees Celsius. And that's where we leave your weather on your feel-good breakfast show. Ah, lots of heavy breathing. Yes, lots of tissues used already, and we're going to build towards a very emotional high point this morning. I think it's going to break me. Cat will be performing oh. at the end of the show to answer the one million <laughs> questions that have been asked of me this last week. But of course, we want you to continue to share the love, and thank you so much for those beautiful messages. If you're going to do it online, use that hashtag, Cat is back, so we can find them and share them. Definitely. Mm. Now, the next conversation that you're about to witness is something that I can't wait for. We're talking about the magic of the outdoors, the magic of the mountain, and sharing some stories on how Kat, as well as the rest of the team, are reflecting on this and using it for something absolutely positive. Filling up the cup, filling it with all the good stuff, and then still being able to share that with everyone else. So don't go anywhere, Mzanzi. Some wholesome conversation okay. coming in in just a bit. We'll see you soon. It's my feel good Those who care for others ask nothing in return, but might be in need of some care themselves. If you feel that someone in your community deserves some recognition for all they do, then Panado can't wait to hear from you. Simply reply to the Afternoon Express Facebook and Twitter pages, tell us who they are, what they do for their community, and why they should receive some care with the hashtag a dose of care and the hashtag Panado Essay. They can stand a chance of winning a dose of care to the value of 5,000 Rand from Panado. Afternoon Express will then add another 5,000 Rand towards the charity or nominee of choice so they too can share in some care. Don't miss the Panado hashtag a dose of care competition running from the 1st of August right through to the 15th of November on Afternoon Express. T's and C's apply.
pizza gluten? Hello, do you know what pizza gluten is? What is pita glucan? No one knows what pita glucan is. Pita glucan is a natural fiber in jungle oats that helps lower cholesterol and keep hearts well. Yes. Jungle, do life with heart. It's my feel good birthday show. Yep, we are standing on top of a mountain today. Welcome back to a very, very special edition of your feel good breakfast show. Catching up with our cat. Our boy, yes. hey, our son, <laughs> our, our family member. We've loved this outpouring of love after two crazy years. It is so good to be connecting again. And I think I can't escape this thought of sometimes when, when life becomes so big, yeah. um, it's easy to feel like your circumstances are beyond your control and to just resign yourself to the fact that this is your fate. But um, you look at those mountains in front of you and it feels like it's insurmountable. You're not going to be able to do it, but often stepping outside onto that mountain oh, literally. is the key, literally. Literally is the key. I mean, it's sometimes such a symbolic representation of being uncomfortable. And it's within those uncomfortable moments that we find so many assets within ourselves that get sort of invoked and you get this weird emancipation within you. It's kind of like something gets set off, something gets lit inside you. And I think that's what the solace of the mountain and these natural, beautiful spaces offer. So excited to see wow. what uh, it and did for you, man. It, and it did a lot. I, I went on my very first hike with Ryle and a group of amazing people and one of them is actually here my friend Kaylee and uh, yeah there was medicine in the mountain was it was it one of those hikes where you were mentally prepared for it because I've been on a hike with Ryle <laughs> where one. it not was, mentally, it was meant to be an easy hike and it ended up five hours and you had to take the cable car down <laughs> and I nearly died yeah. but here I am now. that's a Ryle hike oh uh, well let's take a few of those steps right now with Kat and see how he found peace and yes clarity on top of the mountain have a bigger picture, a bigger ideal of where you want to be. And at some point you're gonna stumble, a big time, maybe even like fall flat on your face. Because you're still pursuing it, because you still want it, you've gotta get yourself up and keep taking that next step. And sometimes that step for me personally was just wake up today, just wake up. Just the simple act of being grateful for waking up today, for me, signaled that you know, there, there is still something that I'm useful for. There is still some kind of purpose that I'm here for. And slowly but surely, it evolved to, to something bigger where I could connect with a community of caring, compassionate people who were open to me as a person, as I am, as imperfect as I am. I think that was a great saving grace. So just after I was at home and I had been literally indoors for what felt like months, I decided that I'd, I really just needed to get off my bum. <laughs> and so I called up Ryle, actually, because um, I knew that he was quite the hiker. And he really seemed to enjoy it. And it's something that I'd kind of touched on once before, having done like a trail up Lion's Head, but I wanted to just use it as a way of spending more time with myself. So yeah, I went out on my first hike with Ryle in the big group of people and it was quite amazing especially when you know you, you just for a moment stand still and you hear this and it's nothing except your own thoughts I really took to it for the next few weeks after that almost every second week I was on the mountain and it was like medicine being out in in nature specifically has definitely connected me more with my spiritual side and when you think about like creation itself and these mountains from whence they came how long they've been here, the beauty that surrounds you that you as a person can't even fathom has really, I think, humbled me to a place of just constant gratitude. If you look around and you look at these beautiful flowers and plants all around, how they're nourished and taken care of every season, you know, who are you then to worry about what you are wearing today, what you eat today, what tomorrow has to hold when all of it is taken care of. And I mean, I have held fast to that cornerstone that no matter what, it doesn't matter, I'll be taken care of. I remember on one of, I think one of the first hikes, in, in fact, one of my hiking buddies saying, you know, make sure that you've got three points of contact for safety. And I kind of extrapolated that into life a little bit um, in that in some of my darkest moments, all I needed was three points of contact, which for me was the love of my family and friends, the love of God, which I knew was certain, and then most importantly, the love for myself. In, in the very beginning of it all, 
I did lose a large part of myself. Like I didn't know how to be, it felt like I didn't know who I was. And this kind of therapeutic journey that I would take every second week was a big, big part, if not the biggest part of how I got back to myself. I think I'm definitely fortunate in the sense that I found a place that afforded me quiet, alone time, and also the beauty of nature around me. These mountains are literally in my backyard. But I think for any other person, it doesn't have to be a mountain, it can be anything else. As much as I think a lot of people might have looked at it and saw the dismal side of it, you know, the loss of momentum in career, if you want to call it that, what the last couple of years have afforded me is an incredible amount of concentrated quality time with my child, which is something that I don't necessarily think I would have gotten otherwise. And in those moments, you learn so much about yourself from a little toddler who tries and tests you and teaches you how to be patient, how to be loving at all costs, under any circumstances, in any conditions. Like, it is truly a transformative experience. I guess it's not just the mountain. <laughs> it's being a father as well. You know, I, I'm striving to be the kind of dad who will, number one, probably teach him never to give up on himself and to really just walk his own life's journey with his own meaning. And one day when he's old enough, <laughs> I'll take him out to the mountain and we'll, we'll tackle these, these treacherous hills together. Getting to the top of a mountain, or in fact anything in life, is certainly a celebratory moment for that moment, but it's about the journey that you went through to get there. I think one thing to realize about standing at the top of any peak, you look around and you only realize that there are other mountains out there to climb, so it's not the end of the journey once you've reached a certain high point. You still need to get back into the challenges of life and climb more mountains, endure more. The most difficult part of anything is kind of just starting. When you're super low down and you're out of it, just start and keep putting one foot in front of the other and you'll get there. I certainly haven't reached a peak in any way, shape or form in my life. And I don't think I, I ever will because I, I constantly want to learn. I constantly want to evolve and be better in everything that I do. Oh. Yes, okay. every, every time you look at this, every time you see this imagery, it's more than just that. It's so symbolic of everything, I think, as a nation that we're going through right now. And I think something about this mountain and this beautiful, beautiful natural playground is offering a sense of healing. And I think it's a conversation that I love to tap in with you. Because, Kat, for me, there was a very interesting moment when uh, we kind of like rekindled. We yeah. we'd initially started to build a bromance on the show. Um, and I was just overwhelmed by the experience I was surrounded by and like a kid just absorbing everything. And I was so sad and to, to just have that absence suddenly. And meeting you again in the mountain, I didn't know what to expect. I was almost a bit nervous and a bit scared. Um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna see you and it was gonna be excitement, disappointment. Yeah. Was it gonna be something empowering or something discerning? I wasn't sure, but I let it all go and just wanted to see you for who you were in the moment. And something incredible happened, just witnessing and experiencing this journey with you in the mountain. Yeah. Um, you had asked so many questions. You've never asked so many questions before. So I realized this was something unusual and not normal to you. Yes. And it was that sense of being in the space of, I'm not comfortable with this, but I'm still gonna push on. For me, Absolutely. that stood out for me. The fact that you were entering into a space that you were so unfamiliar with. The transition I saw in that mountain from the sun not even being uh, up yet in the dark to this emancipation of an energy which literally br brought you to this point where we got to the top of a mountain and I will never forget how you broke out in song. It was like every, every one of us has this internal voice that when you reach that point of uh, emancipation, when you reach that summit, it's that that yeah. release of that energy and the way it came out for you was in pure raw song and voice yeah. and it echoed throughout the mountain like you were just dancing and resonating with everything that was like vibrating on a higher level and it felt to me like you had you literally climbed above so much and that mountain symbolically meant to me like it was one of the few hikes we did and it was a very early moment but for me it just felt like 
Nah, he's good. He's, yeah, he's, I, he's, he's something clicked yeah. And I was very lucky because, you know, I, I called you the week before to yeah. ask, like, are you doing anything? And then you introduced me to the group of people. Mm -hmm. And I was very lucky in that the group of people I was with were these absolutely open-hearted and compassionate yeah. people who um, were all on their own journeys and they understood that that human experience, mm. right, and wanted to persevere together. And like I said, when we were talking about the three points of contact, yes, it was, I love that. Kaylee who introduced me to that concept. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. it really meant a lot in terms of life for mm. me at that time. And I remember one of the biggest challenges when we got up to the needle, which yeah. if you ever are in Cape Town, I like go on that hike. Ooh, intimidating uh, stuff. Yeah. And I get to the top of the needle. And it was, it was almost like life, uh, um, Life affirming, or, yeah. Life affirming, because I had to, t to stand on top of this place that was nearly a, the size of this yeah. table. <laughs> because, you know, and if the wind blew you off, yeah. you'd, you'd be down the mountain. You untethered yeah. yourself. And my legs were rips. shaking and I was scared. And I was like, but I need to get over this just somehow. And then you do something like that and you go, oh, I didn't die. Yeah, OK, I can do this. Yeah. And then it starts playing itself out in real life situations. And you realize how much of a choice yeah. Life is, right? Like we were talking earlier on about that book, Man's Search for Meaning, that came to me at an incredible time by Dr. Frankel, and he survived the Holocaust. And you think about what he says about how he witnessed prisoners in Auschwitz going through the atrocities that would break any human being, but yet there was a choice to be made at every single intersection point. And that couldn't be truer for me in my personal experience, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that many people have experienced that too. I think over the last three years, we have collectively as a nation experienced this as a world, as a global community. We've been tested in a way that we never have before. So you're living out the narrative that so many of us are going through right now. And it's all about taking that one step. I love the fact that we have connected to this group consciousness today and we are getting an outpouring of love. Mm -hmm. And we're going to continue hearing some of those messages right now. Let's hear from What Queen a beautiful Jean. morning. This is hashtag cat is Back and I can mm. see you are back and I'm happy. Oh. You all kept, we are so happy that we are back. You know, fly the SA flag high, continue being you. Yeah. Your talent is what's making you to be who you are. Yo, Queen G, <sighs> thank you very much. Mom. Yeah, and you know, Queen G, let's just pause on, on that <laughs> oh. on that title and it's not lost on me like I said earlier on, the time that we are in right now, the day that we are on right now, mm. right before um, Women's Day tomorrow, and the immense and almost inexplicable love and care and compassion that I was speaking about that I've received from so many incredible women um, that has really propped me up and given me the strength to continue. So for, for that message, Queen G, and so many more out there that come not just in the form of voice notes, but in real life interactions, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful. <sighs> It's all about human connection today. We're going to have more performances from Emo Adams. The emotional stakes will rise even higher. And, of course, Kat is going to be performing at the end of the show. What song is he going to perform? We don't know. Uh, but uh, we are ready for it, and hopefully you guys are as well. Well, please continue to connect with us. Our WhatsApp line is open. It's 063-408-8863. We will see you in just a bit. I'm learning that number. You're going to get it. It's getting there. You're getting about three weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it's my feel good breakfast
Your generosity can ignite a love for reading amongst our youth. Share your homegrown story. See Cadbury Story Edition Packs. There's a glass and a half in everyone. It's my feel good breakfast show. Oh, welcome back. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso on S3. And what a Monday it's been. Hashtag Kat is back. And you know what, Kat? While you've been away, we've introduced this really wonderful segment called Moments, Memories and More. And we use this as a conversation to really just touch base with our own goals, our own futures, our own pasts. And we do it over a cup of coffee while enjoying Omar Rusk. And I think it's only fitting that you and Raul get to share this moment yeah. together today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we did actually on the mountain, Ryle brought like um, oh, to an house, entire that's set of things to cook pancakes. Did he make the pancakes? Yeah, he we had a pancakes. beautiful pancake uh, spread. It was incredible. With blueberries and stuff. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. well, that was a memory. We've got we've got three themed questions for you that we would love to put out there. Put it on the table, and you know everyone really gets to answer it. But the first one, and for today's theme, it is the future. So the first mm. question is: Are you someone that loves to set goals for yourself, milestones for? The future or how do you do you just go with the flow I think right now it's it's definitely a mixture I have a vision I have a goal but um, I ha you, you've got to come back to the the execution of it so I try to have a mix of this is the dream this is what I have as uh, the image of the life I would like and so like, let's break it down to the steps that it's actually going to take to get there and try and execute those steps every day. Mm. Mm. I love that analogy as well, because it's not just about uh, necessarily only the execution, but it's maybe also the way about in which you do it. I like the fact that we all need to have that goal, we need to have that drive, we need to have that direction, but we also be, need to be realistic with the fact that we are human. And mm. I think today highlights the fact that we're gonna make mistakes along the way. We're gonna have some issues and we're gonna have to deal with it. And I think it's how we deal with it and how we either navigate the space back to that goal mm. or realize there's maybe something even bigger along the way Way, that you start to become aware and that perception starts to change. And for me, the great thing about, you know, th this breaking down of the steps is that I think it allows you to be intentional mm. about mm. your choices and your decisions and your actions. So yeah. This actually just triggered such a sweet memory because I remember when I joined the Expresso Morning Show in 2015, mm. you were filming a video for social media and you were talking about the GPS acronym and what it means to you. The oh. G stands for goal, the P stood for planning, and the S stood for start. Oh, and that no, stuck no, with me no, all these no, years, no, your GPS no, analysis no. of navigating your, your way through your own goals. Shoo. Those were your words. Shoo. Yeah, you <laughs> In 2015. In 2015, Shoo. it stuck with me. That was a sweet wow. memory that just came to mind That's now. That's incredible. So oh. we're always making sure the GPS is on, yeah? Yeah, gotta make sure it's on. No matter the signal, even if it goes down, we must find it. Even if it goes the wrong way, it's fine. <laughs> now, next question for you, and hopefully you at home can answer this too. What is one thing that used to be important to you but isn't anymore? Ah, uh, that is, ooh. and it's hard to admit because I think I always kind of thought to myself, no, I don't need that. I don't. It's 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 external validation, mm. um, and I think that also is what caused a lot of the the big punch initially. Is that I was so worried about what's going on out there, what are people saying, what are they thinking, and. Mm. Of course, as, as, as we've been saying about the, the platform that we occupy, we realize the, the significance of it and the importance of it. But man, there's no replacement to the knowledge of self. Knowing yourself and being good with who you are, despite, regardless of anything, mm. is one of the most peaceful emotions and genuinely peaceful emotions that you can, you can experience. I do. And really learning to be like, to just say, it's okay. Mm. It's okay. And I'm okay. I definitely resonate to that because I think often in this day and age, especially in this world of instant gratification, you're looking for instant results when it comes to that emotion as well. And I think it's just okay to accept the reality, like you said, that we're not perfect. We don't need to get caught up in the moment. And if anything, let's just take a pause, take a breath and reflect. Mm. And with that, you'll start to find yourself within it and find your own feelings and your own emotion towards whatever situation you are playing in. And I, I don't know, I just think it's uh, something that for me has been a big standout of all of this is just to be more present in the moments. And I say this very importantly that we are blessed with. Mm. 
every yeah. moment that we share with each other on this show, the yeah. lessons that we get to learn at the same time, to be present in that is such a gift and such a blessing. And there's so much more you can take from that when you are in that sort of state, I think. So for me, it's just slowing things down and your own pace is the most important pace. Don't get caught and don't get distracted in other people and their goals. You are as perfect as you need to be in the moment, as long as you can realize that. I think oh. it's as simple as that. Ryle, that top knot is doing things. <laughs> it's it's catching so signals, hey, bro. I'm <laughs> loving it. My <laughs> goodness. Antenna. It's an antenna of love. I like oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't ready for that. I wasn't okay. ready for that. We need, to end off, we need to end off with one word from each of you. Oh. And I'm going to ask you this. If you can define the future you want in one word, what would it be? Peace. 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 Wow. For you, Ra? Celebration. Celebration. Peace, celebration, and I'm going to choose optimism. Mm. Well, there you have it. It's now your turn to answer us, and we have a fun question for you at home. Now, if you could choose and use one word to describe your family, what would it be? Well, share your answer with us on the Expresso Facebook or Twitter page and use that hashtag more than a rusk in your entry. The best entry will be winning a shot at that 2,000 Rand in cash plus the Omar Rusks hamper. There are some T's and C's that apply and that can be found on our website, expressoshow.com. And all I'm going to say to you is good luck. <laughs> There's more in every dip with Omar. So at least the question's been answered. If you were wondering why Ryle has such good GPS, it's because he's got his love antenna to help him find his way. <laughs> we love it. Um, I think we've, we've all been a little bit vulnerable this morning, so uh, let's um, take a chill pull. If anyone is going to lighten the mood, it's going to be this guy. Emo's final dedication to Cat for this morning is going to be a reggae medley, and we are here for that, my brother. Because it's about feeling good. It's about feeling good. Mm -hmm. Take it away. First and foremost, I just want to say, Raoul, I did not get the pancakes. Uh, very disappointing. Um, you took cat for pancakes, right? Next week. I remember a time when cat and I went um, horseback riding. <laughs> if you ever want to see awkward. <laughs> we, we look so wrong. <laughs> just got a boys on a horse. Listen. Don't worry, you see about a thing, oh, cause every little thing is gonna be alright, say don't worry about a thing, oh, cause every little thing is gonna be alright, you see, I rise up this morning, and I smile with the rising sun, cause there's three little birds, it's all step singing sweet song all the melodies pure and true yeah yeah this is my message to you zaka, zaka, zaka. i say don't worry hey about a thing no 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 every little thing yes it's gonna be all right yeah. i say don't worry uh, about a thing oh because oh, oh. every little thing Everything will always be alright, so let's remix, Kangi. Shorty, you're my angel, you're my darling angel. Closer than my peeps, you are to me, baby. Shorty, you're my angel, you're my darling angel. Girl, you're my friend when I'm in need. Here we go. Looking back on when we first met, I cannot escape. You say, wise men say, only 
Oh, that was wonderful. Rousing. Yeah. That is, that is Emo Adams, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. My goodness. One of the wow. best performers, entertainers in the country Ooh. and definitely a part of our family. Welcome back once again to you, to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And it's feeling really good this morning. Yeah. It feels <laughs> right because we've welcomed back our brother, Kat. Hashtag bring back Kat was your call to action. And man, it was answered. It was, it was, it was all across social media and it's been going, I think that hashtag trended for almost two years mm. and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was there for a while yeah, and it really we was. are so happy that you are back and, you know, I know Graham and you, you had your moment where you guys got to sit down and really catch up and this is the final part we want to share with you. I feel like I, I have an opportunity here to plug into almost a monk-like wisdom that has been honed <laughs> through the fire. And I, I, I think you're gonna have to excuse me for indulging myself because I didn't realize how much of my processing and my catharsism actually happened in these kinds of discussions, being able to work through ideas with you and our amazing guests that we have. But yeah. it's something that, that I certainly lean on. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna round this off with, with one question, but and, and die. It's only the most important question in all of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> what is the most valuable thing now? What is this gig all about for you moving forward? It always has been, remains, and always will be about the South African viewer who chooses to tune into this show every single day because on some level they depend on this platform and this show to give them that starting momentum to the day. They understand that after being here for a half an hour, for two hours, whatever you're doing, just absorbing this energy is something that is so important in steering your day. It has been for me and it's it's the kind of ethos with which I approach this job. 
um, I have so much incredible respect for the people who choose to be a part of this family every day. And it is that, it is that, it's family for me. And that's by far the most important thing. This whole time I've been wondering, is it, am I welcoming you back? Am I welcoming a new man into the space? And it kind of feels like a little bit of both, my friend. Seeing you now in front of you has made me realize how much I've just on, I mean, forget about the rest of the country, how much I've missed you, Vera, and how much I need you and likewise, in this space. Likewise. Do you look likewise. good, man. You look good. <laughs> you feel good. You sound amazing. That laugh hasn't changed. And I'm uh, so proud of you for stepping back into the space in this way. And I'm so grateful that I wow. have you back, even if it's just for five minutes right now, so that I can do my weird inner outward processing thing and, and have my mate back to talk to. Yeah, you're my brother and this family has missed you, my friend. Yeah, we man. have missed you so much. I, I've, I've missed you too and everyone as well. And um, to every single person um, who has prayed for this moment and willed it to come to fruition. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I could not tell you how much this means to me. And um, here's to many more feel good mornings. And the single's coming. coming. Oh goodness. A live performance is coming <laughs> in just a moment. Uh, a new beginning, a new beginning. <laughs> a new beginning. <sighs> I still feel like I need to sit down and really just take it all in, draw it all in. I, I, I didn't realize how important this, and it's not the, it's this place and it's the people. Yeah. Um, you know, because what we do on camera is such a magnification of what is happening in this microcosm of family that we've built here, right? And I didn't realize for a long time how important that aspect of it was. Um, and then once it's not there, the vacuum is there and you're like, what is my life? <laughs> you still wake up at four o'clock in the morning, you look around and you're like, what am I gonna do? What, uh, uh. <laughs> I think the thing for me is it's that like, we've gotten so used to having your validation on tap. And now it's like when it's just you, you left alone, only with yourself. <laughs> it's like, yeah, okay. But but you know, but it's it's not even so much the the validation because that was great, and you know, you know, I'm talking about this validation yeah. here that matters, that I can touch and feel and yeah. breathe the same air with. That you know, when I when I withdrew, I would kind of think. But what is Graham thinking right now about the situation? You know, should I reach out and have a chat with him? Should we just break away from this and go on a hike on a mountain yeah, and just yeah. chat and be brothers like we were? Um, so it's, it was that validation that I most missed. That which happened outside was absolutely great and it's so, so empowering. But it's when you go, you know, for that walk and you meet those people who come from the outside in and they touch your life in a very real sense and it's not just a profile picture with a name yeah. and an emoji it's a person like that matters a lot and we've got to <laughs> i think that's the thing for me now it feels like after this COVID thing because we've all been through this experience together the world over it's the same wherever i go mm. it's like we've had this shared experience of humanity that has just changed everything for me now like that <sighs> I almost don't want it to go back. I want that authenticity. Yeah. But also there's so much still that we need to achieve within this industry and with the show, but within our space now. And it kind of feels like we can do that on a whole different level. But I need you around to do it, man. Same. <laughs> Same. We um, need each other. We need each other. The elders were right, eh? Ubuntu. <laughs> yeah, man. They were right. Thank you for being so vulnerable. I think yeah. a lot of people are feeding off that right now because this is what we're all going through together. Mm. I know you've become the poster child for this rebirth, buddy, but take on board that you are not alone in your journey, not just from the love, but everyone is having this shared experience and you're giving us an opportunity to think and process right now. And by the 5,000 voice notes, and I'm not even exaggerating, the 5,000 voice notes that we received, you are clearly not alone in this journey, buddy. Oh, well, let's listen to some of them. Let's, this one's from Mrs. H. Welcome back, Kat. I pray that God bless you, keep you safe, 
I pray that his light may shine upon you as you are back. May the people see that you have been made for this and nothing will stop you. Continue shining. We love you. Ah, oh, thank you, Mrs. H. Love you right back. And it's those, yeah, it's those, those prayers, eh? Those prayers have held it all together and just, yeah, faith. Faith over fear. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Faith over fear. Let's take a listen to the next one. Good morning, Morning Express. So this is Abe Nati Kawi, a.k.a. Nati Atsasonke. All the way from Johannesburg, I can't even begin to express how happy and excited I am that Ukatleho is back on the show. Man, that guy is such an inspiration. He just, he's, he just reminds us of how important it is to rise every time you fall, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, rise. Thank you very much, Mr. Kawi. Much appreciated. But he, taking us to Kawe. Um, I love it, man. I, I think a lot of us have missed the opportunity to watch you perform. I think you know that that's just my thing. And I've loved it from like the, the first time that we got to share a stage together. I've had you as my like private performer. And I've, <laughs> I've, I've, I've needed this so much. Dodgy. It is, but that's exactly what it is, man. Um, and our viewers absolutely love it. For you, being able to use this tool to process defrag your brain and just wrap your head around the emotion. How important has your music been to you through this journey, dude? Extremely. I think we can all relate to a song that takes us to a moment. Um, and I found that it was in certain, you know, dark moments where I would just resort, it, it was almost like an automatic reaction where I would sing something of a melody that reminds me of a time. Um, perhaps happier than now, perhaps more hopeful than yeah. now. Mm. And then you cling on to those memories and try and transpose them into the now, and that propels you forward. And, uh, you know, that this, uh, it's weird and, and beautiful as well to see my little one with his musical self. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've said to him that music makes me happy. And then um, we have, like, little arguments when it's bedtime. He doesn't want to sleep because <laughs> sleeping is boring apparently and then he yeah. starts singing. Of course. Like, but now it's, it's sleep time. And he, says, and he says, but Papa, music makes me happy. You <laughs> <laughs> can't argue with that. Prove me wrong, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the psychology of music for me, it's, it's an amazing thing to be able to express uh, emotion and really take you to a place that is better. Mm -hmm. And he's going to take us to that better place with one very special performance to round off the show in just a moment. Cat is back and he's going to sing for me in just a moment. <laughs> I'll be here as well. It's my feel good worthy show. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining us and for the outpouring of love and emotion today. It's a moment that we at Expresso, our loyal fans, undoubtedly you guys at home and Kat have all been waiting for, for him in more ways than one to return to the stage that he so dearly loves and bouncing back onto the Expresso stage in a very powerful way. Now, Kat would not be standing here if it were not for the support of the incredible woman in his life, the people around him, who, when he couldn't pick himself back up, were there to stand next to him and help him back onto his feet. And he is gonna shine once more on this stage with the performance of Still the One. Might have 
took the long way We knew we'd get there someday They say I bet They'll never make it But just look at us Holding on We're still together Still going strong Man, come on, come I'm on. Sorry, that come backup on, singing come was on. just too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Only only backup singing Adam. was just only too much. This can bring such magic. Thank you very much. Anytime, brother. Anytime. Thank you so much for to to everyone who has who's prayed for this moment and who has made it possible through you know giving me strength and resilience. And um, my only hope is to really put my heart and soul into this the same way that I did from day one and that I'll ultimately make you proud of um, you know the person that I am the person that I want to be and yeah uh, this is for Phoenix um, there's no ultimately you've already made us proud yeah um, it feels, it's the weirdest thing. It feels like it's been an eternity and it feels like no time at all has passed. But it feels good and it feels right. And the whole of this country feels right just right now. And even if we've been able to give them one moment to help that person who was where you were standing two mm. years ago that couldn't pick themselves mm. back up, you've helped them get back up. And they're on their feet. And we're going to keep pushing forward because you're going to keep pushing forward. Mm. And we're going to mm. keep doing what we love more than anything else in this world, which is making feel good entertainment. So good. <laughs> 
sing us off, my boy. That was too good. Thank you so much, South Africa. We love you. When something's on your mind, but words don't come so easy, think of all the other ways to say it. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.